Hello, everyone, and welcome to Smashbox TV's podcast 120. I'm your host, Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, along with Johnny V. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> no, not this time. I don't know. It sounded pretty hot. Well, that, <laughs> let's keep that between you and me, buddy. People thought you were, we got a few write ins. People were wondering if Johnny V was just going through his changes. No, I gave up those pills. <laughs> uh, they. Uh, they weren't working for me, so. Uh, and then we actually had to clarify what changes were they speaking I, of. We weren't sure. <laughs> exactly. And I, I, you know what? I'm free to any type of changes. If you, if if you know, I hope you would. If they're accept for the better. For better, or just change. Change isn't always better or worse. It's just change, and sometimes you deal with it. All right. Enough Trump politics out of you. Oh I, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know that's where you were going with oh, this. Oh yes, completely. That's. <laughs> uh, I'm not uh, sure that was the right segue, but uh, <laughs> welcome everyone tonight. Uh, we're gonna have a pretty uh, laid back, uh, relaxed show. Uh, we originally had uh, a brief conversation with our uh, one of our famous long-haired friends uh, on the disc golf scene in one Gregory Barsby. However, he had uh, some other obligations and things that he was taking care of tonight, so we're going to postpone that. But Gregory Band Barsby, practice. band practice, band practice, yeah, in somebody's <laughs> garage, uh, somebody's mom was making the cookies. I don't know, but uh, he says he has band practice and a few other things. So he is in fact in the queue. We're going to hear from him probably in the next few weeks. But uh, Greg Barsby will be looking forward to having you on the show. Maybe a few uh, additional guests that will accompany Mr. Barsby when we have him. So, again, he's going to be in the queue for sure. I've recently had a, a brief conversation uh, with our uh, three-time, she the three-time uh, women's world champion, Paige Pierce. Uh, Paige is talking to us about uh, joining the show here sometime in the next couple of weeks. I think she's going to have ex some uh, exciting things going on with her. I know she's... Uh, she likes to hang out around the rumor, or, or others hang out around her rumor mill, or, or she does. I don't know, but we'll get we'll get all the straight answers. There's right a from, mill, and there's some rumors. And... Yeah, we'll get all the direct answers right from uh, Paige Pierce. So I know we're going to be talking to her sometime in the next few weeks. Uh, and then uh, regarding tonight, we got to thank a, a couple of people that we reached out to relatively late. So, Will, like I promised you last week, you're not the only one we reach out to late. Uh, but with Barsby's uh, postponement. Uh, we were uh, were gracious enough to hear that we're going to have DG Mike, Mike Fierke from Illinois. He's, uh, for the last couple of years, worked on a very serious initiative. He's tied it into disc golf, of course, with a nickname like DG Mike. Of course he has. So we'll be talking to DG Mike at some point tonight. And then also one of the uh, hottest uh, channels in all of the YouTubes and all around the world and talked about so much yesterday and, and rightfully so all year and for the last few years, uh, I've reached out to Jonathan Gomez. Gomez. Not Jonathan Van Derzen. <laughs> not, I know. I, not, I, I was pausing for the, the stall to see if people would guess it was you, but no, you don't count. Not Jonathan Ray. <laughs> not Jonathan Ray. Nope. Jonathan Gomez. Jonathan Gomez. Uh, we're going to be talking to him. Of course, uh, the uh, I, I guess he's the head henchman probably over of uh, Jomez Pro. We'll be talking to the, uh, him. Uh, he said that he would join us. Of course, plenty of hubbub, I think that's still a term for you kids these days, around the Paul Macbeth in the bag, and rightfully so. Uh, the phenomenal video that they had put out, we'll talk about the collaboration, we'll talk about uh, some of the details of it, and uh, if you haven't seen it, I can give you guys a few minutes to go take a look at it, but I'm, I'm guessing most of you have seen it. Uh, when you have 20-some thousand views in the first day or so, on YouTube, that means most of your disc golf community is out is there. Is that all they had? That. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, all. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, Alta World and Steve and his great reporting, I think yeah, I read they... that he said, um, you know, that Jonathan had mentioned that it was one of their uh, f uh, quickest download or quickest viewed, uh, most viewed videos in it's... shortest amount of time. I, I and... haven't had a chance to watch it all, but the lame. Part... You're well, lame. I've been busy. No, you haven't. Yes, I am. And uh, but it looked. From some of the the real brief quick spots I spot checked it, it looked really good. So yeah. they are setting some standards. As they uh, have been known to do here for a while. So uh, we'll see if we can get him on the call and on the line on the, on the interwebs and have a quick conversation as well about what's going on there and what we can expect to see more uh, from Jomez Pro uh, moving into um, 2017 and beyond. So good stuff. Uh, I know we I know we've kind of talked about it a few times. Johnny, have you pulled up anything that you saw in terms of PDGA uh, action in this last week? And there was really one or two 
Uh, I know there was a big B tier. Uh, well, if it wasn't before, it is now because uh, <laughs> Paul McBeth attended. Uh, but a B tier taking place out in California. I believe that was the SoCal, SoCal Championships. Yep. Uh, was that Suzette Simons that runs that, or is that Jeff Spore? It's uh, Jeff Spore. Uh, that, Randy that Wright that is the TD, the, and Jeff Spore is the, the okay. assistant TD. So. Uh, and so you want to jump right into a, what we saw in the, a few of the results there? Sure. It, I'm, I'm looking through, and it doesn't appear that they had a FPO division. So we're gonna we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the Masters division real quick. Uh, taking third place, Kevin McKelvey, shooting a 13 under par. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Second place, Noah Rodriguez, rated 977, shooting a 16 under par, and taking his shirt off and the win. Like a helicopter, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> Robert Ryan, no surprise, the 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 master to beat out there normally, uh, you know. And they've got a lot of really good masters out there. They've got Baldwin, you've got Shasta, you've got Rob Ryan. So, but Rob Ryan seems to be the guy, the guy to beat. So. Well, and I think it's a NorCal SoCal thing, and who's traveling and who's yeah. not. Uh, you know, Baldwin and and. Uh, uh, Patrick Bryan, who you just mentioned, both mm-hmm. NorCal guys. Not everyone's making the trip down, and well, it's. I think it's easy for us to, yeah, at least from this perspective, it's easy c- to consolidate forget. California. Yeah, exactly. Like, to think about, oh yeah, that's like a good six hours to get from one spot to another, or four or whatever. Boohoo! But um, yeah. So uh, Rob <laughs> yeah. Ryan uh, was he also rated the highest amongst the Masters going into the weekend? He was. He was the highest rated by okay. by it looks only only three points over uh, William Civilis. Seville's William Seville's that's how I go William S yeah William yeah so congratulations to Robert Ryan on uh, taking home the victory shooting an 18 under par besting the field by two strokes okay Uh, let's get into the open division Uh, Rob for what it's worth uh, I know we talk a lot about sponsor swapping and whatnot I I think we're seeing Rob Ryan not uh, I think we're seeing him throw legacy I would believe that. That's what I've. Uh, that's what I think I've gathered on the internets. Doesn't all California? Shouldn't uh, they? They. they <clears throat> great product by our boys over at uh, at Legacy, but um, said it once, said it a hundred times. Not everyone throws it yet in the tournament scene. Yeah. Rob Ryan is, I believe. I think unless you're uh, hardcore sponsored by a single particular manufacturer, you should bag a Legacy disc. Uh, a few I, of them. I, at least one. I'm kind of a fan of bagging one of, try to bag one of every manufacturer, try them out. But Legacy, the Canon, uh, for me, the Canon and the, uh, the. You don't throw the gauge. Nope. No, I'm thinking. I'm thinking the putter, the uh, the the closer, the clutch. Clutch. Thank you. Not the closer, the clutch. Uh, the the clutch. Both of which are phenomenal discs, and I bag them both. So. All right, let's talk about the Open Division. The Open Division uh, got real interesting about a week ago when mm-hmm. one Paul McBeth said, I'm going to come home and I'm going to play in an event. So right away, kind of uh, kind of took the wind out of probably quite a few Open player sales, <laughs> at least three or four of them. But uh, taking fourth place, Chris, with I think the best golf name, better yep. than Eagle, I think better than Forehand. I'm going... Chris Shotwell. I like it. I love it. it I like. I, I'm just I saying. I love Shotwell. You, but... you gotta love Shotwell. It's not like you can get an eagle and still not shoot well. You can be a. You can have a forehand and still be a bad player. You can't be shot well and not shoot well. <laughs> That's uh, hands down. I think it's my favorite. All right. I'm a little more old school. I I, I don't think they're out there watching. Uh, Kim, and Ed. Ed. Birdie, spelled B U R D E, oh, uh, yeah. and he's. I know they're, I, they're old school. They are. They're very old school for the for those of you that don't. Know. Uh, we're in Illinois for a while, and so on and so forth. Uh, now down in Tennessee, Kentucky area, but Ed Birdie has that's just a, that, always. That's got to be right up there. I think you're. And I he's think got you're right. one, and he also has one of the most unique laughs in all of disc golf. He had a very, a very he has a very distinct. Uh, chuckle about him and anyone that especially we have a huge illinois uh contingency anyone that knew ed knows uh great spirit and great guys but i've always loved ed birdie eagle eagles in theory are better than birdies but really what's more common a birdie a birdie and i i would love to be known as the guy that's birdieing all over so be known as the birdie man i still like i still prefer shot well i I got you taking fourth place rated a thousand and three chris shot well shooting a 21 under par uh third place dave super britado 
Hurtado, uh, rated 988, so kind of jumping up, uh, beating a couple of the other guys that might be rated a little bit better than him, shooting a 23 under par. Taking second place, Bobby, music to my ears. Mm, mm, smooth, so sweet. Smooth jazz music to my PDG ears. PDG number 15911, rated 1,020, shooting a 33 under par, and crushing the field by a single stroke. <laughs> One single stroke. Apparently, he eagled the second to last hole, or the third to last hole. Something, I, yeah, I, and, I tuned and, in the live and, feed late. And Bobby only birdied it. Something like that. So, <laughs> so uh, Paul McBath, PDG number 27523, rated 1,051, takes down the field, shooting a 34 under par. Um, you can't really argue with that. He looked like he, he looked like he averaged about 1045 golf, if I had to take a wild guess. So weak. A, a little, weak? Little under his a little under his normal rating. But hey, he's it's the end of the year. He probably hasn't been practicing a heck of a lot. So, you know, slacking off at a ten forty five, a ten forty three, whatever it is, you know, you can get you can get by with that. So naturally uh, there was a little ribbing that had to take place. <laughs> we, oh, oh, yeah, we were sitting. <laughs> so we were watching the Packers get demolished uh, Sunday, Sunday night. night. Yep. And you and I were at the at a table, eating some dinner, having a drink, and I kind of made the joke that said, "Wow." You wanted first of all. Let me disclaimer. No, yeah, yeah. You decided to dip into uh, uh, territory that's usually been reserved for. Other podcasters, I, I, I did. I made. <sighs> I, I don't know I made that you want to go there. The in private joke, <laughs> uh, because I don't know her as well as some. That it was. I found it funny, and of course, I was just joking. That Paul decided to win right after flying away from the East Coast, and I chuckled about it. And what does Terry Miller do? <laughs> I I run with it. <laughs> he runs with it, and and you can get away with that because obviously you're you're you know her and you're friends with her, and she gave you a good eye roll, and then mentioned it in her Twitter feed. Uh, so we made a joke about Hannah and Paul. So and yeah. and I know they're 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 so happy. She's flying <laughs> over to the west side of the country to be with him for the week for family. So mm. congratulations to those two, and congratulations to Paul on uh, another victory. So. Well done, sir. Well done. Very nice. I saw uh, also in B tier land out in uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina. We saw Barry Schultz uh, pick up a, a win out there handedly by ten strokes. Uh, I would say that was pretty much the biggest news. And I don't know. I don't even know if that's really news. Another Elaine King victory. Like it. It's only she beat only. We'll say one person, but that's still. In the in the record books, as we were discussing, nobody looks at that. People are going to look at the number of wins, and she's still racking them up week after week. I th- um yeah, I was going to say, does that make like twenty three hundred? But two hundred and twenty one unofficially on the yeah. PDGA website is how it's listed as. And speaking of the PDGA website, uh, I made. Uh, There was an announcement made. Uh, The PDGA has graciously supported Smashbox in a number of our endeavors, along with the Disc Golf Guy video blog. So thank you again to to those guys, uh, to everyone. It's funny, I I should say thank you to them. We're all the PDGA. We're all PDGA members and part of the PDGA, and and I think everyone needs to remember that. But uh, we saw that the PDGA has officially grown to member number 90,000. So uh, I believe Brian Graham had made a post saying uh, it was less than a year ago or just about a year ago that uh, number 80,000... Okay, I'll read it directly. On December 27th, 2015, Norway's participant uh, was number 80,000. Today, uh, number 90,000 was issued. Uh, And that's Eric Beck of Colorado is member number 90,000. So. Uh, in th- that 11 months, 10,000 new members have been added to the PDGA's, uh, to our PDGA's uh, um, database. So uh, pretty Ty- cool. Tyler Durden asks, does anybody know what the new PDGA disc will be next year? I, I don't know yet myself, and I probably, I may not see it for a while, if ever, because I won't get a new, uh, an actual disc. But I know we talked about it on the podcast a few months ago that there was going to be, there was an RFP for people to submit to be uh, the manufacturer to be chosen 
as the new member disc, but I, I, I don't know what the disc, um, or if it's even been decided on, to tell you the truth. So I'm not, uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, Chris Cobb asks, how many active members? That's a good question. I don't know that off the top of my head. I, I wonder if somebody, if we could just go actually to the PDGA site ourselves and do that math. I don't know if there's a way to do a search for active versus inactive. Um, of course, go out to pdga.com, click on membership, and then you could go to player search, and there's not an active button there. So I'd, I'd somebody probably, could tell us that if I took, If I had to take a guess, it'd probably be about 30,000. Because I'm looking at the I think that seems pretty yeah. I'm looking at the twenty fourteen uh active members. Uh twenty twelve was eighteen thousand, twenty thirteen was twenty thousand five hundred, twenty fourteen was twenty four thousand. So, you know, if you're picking up I mean, I don't think the growth will probably continue to skyrocket. So I'd I'd have to say probably around thirty thousand. Yeah, I would think that's a pretty good estimate. Yeah, as if, well. if they gained two to four thousand every you know, every year, they're anywhere between thirty to thirty five thousand active members. Uh, and so of course those are, again, people that have paid the dues. There was someone who had questioned online saying, well, does that include all the people that, you know, uh, pay on the weekends who aren't necessarily, uh, members and they're just a quote unquote member or getting a pass for the weekend and so on. And so no, those are nope. actual numbers that have been issued to that many different people. And someone else had said, well, people are getting them for their for their dogs and for their newborns and such now. And the newborns, I don't care because no. that, that's hopefully a person that will still continue to, uh, well, that will grow into playing a dog, probably not so much, <laughs> but, and I don't know if we could, uh, again, dig that deep or who could dig into those stats, but I can't imagine out of 90,000 numbers, take a guess. Maybe there should be a trivia question that we could find the answer to later from a PDGA member or PDGA headquarter person. How many do you think are dogs or animals? Animals, not just dogs. Of 90,000 member number bought, how many do you think are animals? 60. Oh, I was going to say 500. Oh, God, I don't think that many. I, I, I don't think that many. I don't think there's there's probably – I would be surprised if it's more than 100. I think 60 is a, a safe number. It just – it doesn't – I don't know. Like, who would <laughs> – Well <laughs> – Good question. I don't know if there's a way to tell because I'm I when you fill out it's you, the options are male or female uh, when you fill out a, a new member form, which doesn't which I, I, okay me. I guess gender male or female but it, uh, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't say uh, you know there's no there's no ethnicity <laughs> no there's no uh, breed there's no yeah I, I guess so that'd be I'd be curious to know yeah just how many that is and if there's a way to know though other than just uh, guessing by names but there's plenty of names. There's there's some dogs out there named Roger, I'm sure. Ralph. So, yeah. So yeah, is is Ralph Ralph one? Pete? I don't know. McCabe, I know you're listening. I know you're watching. So tell us, is is Ralph? A, I feel like Ralph is. Liz Lopez might know. I know they were they're pretty they're pretty uh, close. So yeah, maybe. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Kevin McCoy from the PDGA board says, uh, support the cause. Sign your chickens up. <laughs> Which... Only free range, though. None of these cooped <laughs> of chickens. Course. I mean, yeah, we don't no GMO. No, none of yeah, the, none yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. Let's. <laughs> Liz Lopez says he's not. Oh. So Ralph is not a PDGA. I know what Ralph member. should be getting for Christmas. Probably a dog bone. Oh, I'd say a PDGA. No. Or probably not one of those big chocolate frisbees. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably not. Not. Uh, if you search by current and multiply twenty five by page, there's about thirty five thousand that are current. Oh, so Ronald doing a little extra work for us. Oh, wow, thanks, Ronald. We we'll get you a disc out pretty soon. If you so search like... by current, but is current is that an option? I'd assume if he can search by current, then yeah. That's what I'm saying. Is though so I 30, don't... We'll just say thirty. Oh, status. Minutes. There is. There was all along. I, I said there wasn't. God, I should hit yeah, you. Yeah, current versus expired. Okay. Yep. So cool. All right, Ronald. We still owe you a disc. It's sitting at my house, but I told Johnny to get me your address, and I'll get that to him today. And he didn't do that, so I'll be mailing out your disc. We'll get that to you. And that's on me. Normally, I'd push it off on Terry, but that one's on me. So, And speaking of giveaways, uh, we should warn everyone. Are, are we done submitting, taking submissions? Oh, yeah. Oh. Should all we right, wait? well, we're done. No, well, I was going to no, say give them another hour. No, but... no way, because I've already exported and You're... done all the work. So mm. later, later today, I've already pulled all of the numbers from Facebook and put them into a spreadsheet. I'll do the drawing for the 2010 Japan Open Star Banshee, a 158.8 stamped in Japan. I purchased it while I was in Japan because I did not have enough stable light plastic. And I have no problem giving this away to somebody. So you are we had about 
it's kind of a test because I want to know how this went, how easy it was to do this before maybe giving away something cooler than that. So this was a nice easy one. We had about 300, only 361 entries. I was a little surprised. Well, I'll double down on that in the sense that I'd like to give some stuff away. I don't know what it's going to be, but it'll be a couple discs. Don't say that because then we're going to sit here for like two hours. Figuring no, no, no. Out. It doesn't matter what it is, but it'll be two discs. And I'm going to do essentially, I'm going to copy your, oh, good. your brilliant idea. And all you have to do is go out to the Disc Golf Guys Facebook page. So we use the Smashbox one. You had to like it. That's all you had to do. And then you had to submit a number between one and 10,000. Right now, um, my video Disc Golf Guy Facebook page, I don't know, I don't know, it's four or 5,000 likes. We'll just say between one and 7,000. So your, are your odds better? No, not really. One in 7,000. So go out to the Disc Golf Guy, uh, the... We have a page on yeah, Facebook go and uh, go out there. If you haven't liked it, please like it. And once you've liked it, then go ahead and uh, put in any number between one and 7,000. 7,000? Okay. Yeah, because I think there's like 5,000 on there now that make sure that we have, I don't know. Uh, plenty of, there's plenty of space. There's <laughs> no real rhyme or reason. Yeah. Well, between one and 7,000, and then I will randomly select a number using random.org. And once I do that and uh, all the numbers come in, uh, I'll pick the one that is closest. You can be above or below it. It's not prices, rights, rules. So you could be above or below it. Uh, but the person closest to the number chosen is the person that will win um, this minor swag pack. It'll be two discs and some other stuff. How about that? Two discs plus other stuff uh, valued at no less than at least 1999. <laughs> Speaking of 1999, yes, that is the... MSRP for one of the prizes we're going to give away later tonight. What? Yeah. Another one? Another More one. prizes? We just got messaged. This just didn't, 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 Captain America stamped. And a chocolate truth? Is that what he said? <laughs> no, I don't think that's that's not getting past me. So uh, An aviator tonight. So we're going to figure out a way to give away an aviator later tonight. Um, I think, and we will, uh, and they're going to, Dynamic Disc, thank you very much. He's going to mail that out directly to you, so we don't have to Sweet. worry about that. Aviator, of course, being Dynamic Disc's new Ultimate Disc uh, that was recently released on, I believe, November 11th. And um, so, yeah, thank you very much. Cool Daddy Slick Breeze, uh, Bobby Brown, and uh, obviously Dynamic Disc for making that happen. We'll have a little contest a little later. I think what we're going to do in uh, just a few seconds here, if, we're, if he's going to be ready, we're going to try and bring up Jonathan Gomez and uh, have a little conversation as he's become the, uh, well, already was one of the hottest entities in all of disc golf land on the YouTubes. It's, you know, it's not very nice of you just to... You know, talk about the way he looks all the time. I mean, he's got talent, too. He's not just pretty he's face. He's not a pretty face. All right. Well, we're going to welcome him to the show, I believe, for the first time officially. I think that's yeah, long overdue. Definitely. Uh, Mr. Jonathan, how are you doing tonight, buddy? I'm doing great, guys. How are y'all? Good. Wonderful. We're good. Uh, first and foremost, thank you so much. I know it was uh, somewhat of a last-minute idea uh, to get you on, but we were thinking about things in the news, people, things going on, and one of the hottest topics in our entire sport right now is uh, another fine production by you guys, and in the bag with uh, that Macbeth fella. Whoa! Yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we were we were really definitely looking forward to finally getting out in the least. So better late than never, I guess. Well, and, and it's it's funny in true internet land. Uh, I saw one of the very earliest comments was, well, well, this needs to be updated. Paul, Paul throws a leopard three now and I, and I need him to talk about that. Oh, you know, you just yeah. showed me like 19 other discs, but he, he's thrown another one. So w when's the new one coming? Out? <laughs> um, they want to hear it now, buddy. Yeah. I mean, what's <laughs> funny is even the very next day, Paul's, Pulled out two more destroyers that he showed me. He's like, "Well, you're in the bags already out of date." And that was oh. the day after we filmed it. So oh, jeez. I've, I've mentioned it more than once in the comments. Like, just like you, the pros bags are basically fluid. They're constantly changing. They discs wear down, and people lose 
discs in the water. Even the pros lose discs in the water, and or they want to try new mold. They want to take the mold out. So I mean, the idea behind the in the bag doesn't necessarily mean like this is what he's throwing at this very moment because you're gonna watch that video a year from now if you stumble upon it, and it's gonna already have been out of date. It's more like when we when we decided to take on the project, it was more the principle of you know how we want to start making these so that we can keep perpetually players up in their bag. No, no. And it's, I was going to say, and it's not like he took out all his destroyers and put in leopards, you know? He put in new exactly. destroyers, people. So it, it's a consistency thing. These are, while it might be, uh, they might be different destroyers, it's still a destroyer. And a major portion of this is what is Paul throwing, you know? is he, He's not throwing a bunch of... Uh, yeah, <laughs> a DX birdies, you know? archangels, <laughs> archangels, Valkyries. Uh, Maybe you know, a Pegasus in there. Or yeah, the, yeah. Hey, I, I had a Pegasus. It was way, I've, it's a one thirty nine Pegasus. It's great. Um, but no, it, it's it's a point in time in someone's career, and I think it's uh, it looks great. So, uh, and and let's be real. It's great to see what I and, and I'll admit. Here's another reason why I've I've personally hesitated from doing any in the bags, uh, not just because I'm not a good editor, but because I've always had this hesitation. Like I know people want to see what's in a bag, but let's face it, Paul throws discs like n none of us, like the three of us combined, could take all of our best uh, qualities and attributes, and we're still not throwing a disc as efficiently and as effectively as Paul. So when he tells me he's got uh, a flippy this or a destroyer that, I'm like, that's great, but I don't have that form. <laughs> yeah, and the way he throws a destroyer is about the way I probably throw a leopard. Yeah. You know? And I, we can't even lie to Jonathan and tell him how we throw because he's seen us throw at GBO. <laughs> yeah. We can't even lie and say how good we are. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't have much to say about that day either. <laughs> were, were there any um, – were, what were some of the hesitations? I, I think I, I read in the article that you said you've really never done uh, an in-the-bag before, but were there any of those types of hesitations uh, on your end where you thought, like, well, you know, I haven't done this and here's why? Uh, have any of the, were, were there any of those reasons? Um, well, I mean, we had always stayed busy with tournament coverage. I mean, I started out from the very beginning. I did a couple of grip uh, reviews for the when, the when the grip bags, the Aces and LCs were first coming out. And that was just kind of how I was getting started and slowly the tournament coverage. And then we just stayed pretty busy with that. I had a couple of people interested in the bag and it just never really worked out. Um, and I had no, you know, if I would have done one, you know, a couple of years ago when I first thought it would have just, you know, it would have just been, just like any of the other ones. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of glad that we didn't tackle it until I felt like we were in a better place with, with you know, the kind of people like Juan from Overstable and Michael who's constantly pushing new ideas. You know, it's just really good to see him help us out, a lot, you know, along the way. And it's, it's, you know, but both of these guys, when we, we all three come together, I think it was a perfect culmination of, of, you know, good timing to, to finally take on something like that where it, we could, make something that we thought maybe we're just trying to push it just to a new, a new just insert some new concepts basically to, to things that we've been used to seeing. Okay. Now, uh, it's, let's speak a little bit about the amazing uh, collaboration and assistance and the crew that you have. Uh, talk a little bit about the counterparts that, you know, help make that, uh, that video what it is. And I know it's a lot of your videos, but talk a little bit about, uh, the, your, your team that you've assembled and that you work with. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've basically, it was the crew that, that helped that did, um, worlds, our pro worlds coverage. Most of those guys is because we filmed it while we were there at worlds kind of building off of that. And, you know, we, we put a lot into that coverage to try to bring, you know, make it the best that that we've done before. And so we were kind of trying to piggyback off of that. And, uh, so yeah, Juan from Overstable Studios, Juan Garcia, um, uh, he's just incredible with graphics. He, he, he can take anything in After Effects and build it from scratch and implement it into the coverage as we, you know, I give him video clips, give him, a, you know, a little bit of ideas or direction. He just takes it beyond what, you know, where I could have done it or where I could have imagined it. So that's just, you know, such a big thing to have because it's just all I can like that. The, that's basically what he brings to to the table. 
of course, Michael, who's been there with me pretty much since the beginning. Um, and he started implementing these shot trackers and we get questions about it all the time. And I just take that as a, you know, people want to see that more. And so we thought, man, as much work as that would be, like, can you imagine putting a shot tracker for every single disc in Paul's bag so that as he's throwing them, people can not only hear him say, oh, it holds out straight for, you know, a couple hundred feet and tails off, you know, fades left. That kind of, so we wanted to be able to illustrate that. And and also one of the things that I think sets it a little bit apart is you, with all the time and energy that it took for all three of you, uh, plus Paul's time, so on and so forth, uh, it, it was quite the effort. You know, you said you you had been putting this off because you wanted to make sure that you could do it right, and then when you did do it, it took quite the uh, energy and effort. And then you even had partners, so to speak, that helped make that possible. Uh, and and immediately I think of Boom. I know I saw them in the. Uh, um, in the in the, your commercial set, uh, and a huge shout out I've got to say to Josh as well. I've I've been working with him the last two days on some stuff for this weekend. But uh, talk a little bit about your partners in that video, Boom, and some Prem Flight and Innova. Yeah, um, Innova has always been huge with us. I mean, we have great relationships with with all of the manufacturers. Obviously, we we like to kind of better down to the different tournaments. And but Innova, obviously, you would think if we're going to do this in the bag and all but two discs are Innova, and, and he's, you know, such a big, you know, name for them. Like, why not, you know, have them in here? Uh, so they were not, there was no hesitation there whatsoever. Once we kind of finally got the idea off the ground and we're able to present them with, hey, this is going to be a little bit different than, than what everyone's used to seeing. And we we think you, it would be big for, for y'all to help, you know, help us out, and, and it would help y'all out in turn. The, the relationship there could be to be big so obviously levi is a huge contact with us and joe and uh joe rotan so they've always been huge uh, getting us the support we need to get projects like this out so they were the title sponsor that was big um boom josh barnhill um all of all of our hats that i've ever had done are his and he's the quality is incredible people brave over those things when we get new shipments in i mean those things flop so so I'm all about hats. I wear them all the time, so I'm real picky with the quality, and, and I've never had a complaint with him. Um, this is one of his right now, anyway. So. <laughs> um, and then uh, Supreme Flight, um, John Tompkins, he's, um, he's been there every single world. If you've ever seen Macbeth playing, playing worlds, you've seen John carrying his bag, and he's got such a good thing going with Supreme Flight. He's got a full retail set up with discs and apparel and bags on his website, so... You know, we he was really big stepping in there too, um, being another sponsor. So those big, you know, those three were, you know, we kind of pushed at the very end for the sponsorships because we, it kind of went, the whole project kind of went stagnant. So we kind of had to finally get some stuff together, to, some visuals with Juan and Michael, and start putting stuff together. And say here, here's what we're working with. And once we did that, you know, it, it kind of all just came together at the very end to help us get the thing finally out to the public. Now, uh, and, and it turned out great, as everyone has talked about, and obviously when you have the name that you do in Paul Macbeth, uh, that helps as well, and you're, and you're cross-promoting with Innova. Do, do you feel like uh, we've seen a lot of the in, in the bag, so to speak, or what they throw or building your bag? You know, We've seen Avery Jenkins kind of do something with that, and then we've seen a little bit of the in-the-bag action from Spin TV. Do you feel like this is, was a missed opportunity on their part? Um, I, I know you're not out to uh, clash with them by any means because you work with them, but it, was this um, a missed opportunity by them, or were you guys just more uh, on top of it or aggressive with it? Hold on, Terry. I, oh, no I problem. can't hear anything you're saying. Oh. <laughs> Lucky you. No. <laughs> I... I... I can't hear anything. I can see the video. I don't know if you can hear me, but yeah, we yeah, can, we can, we can, we can hear, you. hear you just fine. Hold yeah, on. we've got no problems hearing I'm you. Press something fancy and pull it up on my other computer and see if I can hear you through that. I okay. don't know if it'll be delayed or not. But it, I can't. It, yeah, it'll be it'll be delayed. So. It'll be a delayed like twenty oh. seconds or so. That might not work. Yeah. Uh, uh, so so, so we, we can call you back uh, via Skype yeah. here. Yeah, yeah let's we're, we'll we'll uh, we'll call you back. We'll call you right back. We'll call you Hold right on. back. I guess do you want to disconnect and try again. I'm yeah. not sure what's going on. Hold on. All right, we're going to have a quick technical 
God, those post-production guys just can't get their shit together for live. I'm telling you. That's why. No, I'm totally kidding. Uh, we're going to see if we can. Uh, is that is that better? You got us? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Uh, I wonder why all of a sudden it just yeah, died. Yeah, well, I wonder us. what happened. We were we were doing so we were doing so good. Um, well, let's do. Uh, hmm. You can't hear us. I wonder. I know uh, what happened. We're not sure what happened uh, either. Yeah, we're not people have been trying guys. to mute, people right. have been trying to mute us for years. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. Uh, uh if, if you want to take a moment uh, to reboot your Skype, the Skypers. All right. Well, we're gonna stand down for just a second. We'll, we can yeah, hopefully we'll get, him, get this uh, we'll figured get him, out. Yeah, we'll get him. Back I think up. he just really wanted to dodge my question. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not it was a missed uh, opportunity with Spin yeah, TV. Yeah, um, because we've seen so many great videos out of Spin, and and clearly they've hit it hard, and they've brought in amazing graphics. They have awesome editors. You know, they've definitely been a cut above the rest in terms of what have been done in the past. And now Jomez, as even somebody who works at Spin says, mm-hmm. Jomez has yet raised the bar yet again. But and, I'll um, but I'll say this. Paul's I don't, one of the news things, flat, Paul is their flagship player. I, don't I know, know if that's but one of the things that to that Jomez and Overstable Studios has been doing is pushing the graphics above and beyond what anybody else has done. That's not what Spin is known for. Spin is known for put out quality uh not not that this isn't, but quality content. Not necessarily graphics special effects or whatever you want to call them um so uh, I, I mean i don't necessarily know well we'll see how he answers if it's a missed opportunity or not okay uh and, and it very well and you know what i certainly uh one one might be able to argue that uh it's great to have kind of a third party be doing paul's versus someone from within the company yeah or the fact that spin is so closely tied to to uh, obviously to Innova and Paul and whatnot, that maybe an independent company uh, may have added additional validity to it, especially sure. with the job that they did. So I understand, and again, this isn't to be in, in, in any way, uh, uh, you know, a negative thing towards any company. It's just I I wonder if that opportunity. I mean, clearly they have access to Paul. Uh, this is Innova. They have access to Paul. They know what he's throwing. And uh, it just seems like something that that's – I'm surprised that that's not something that they, w- in this case, would have had in-house. But Yeah, someone's saying Juan is a graphics master. Um, yes. Agreed. He yeah, is. We know that. Yeah, he's he's come to us and asked if there's anything he can do to help us out, and we just haven't found a you – know, as much as we'd love to work with him, we just haven't found a fit yet for what he can do because what he's doing tends to apply a lot better to uh, post-edit stuff, not so much live. Um, so unfortunately, you know, we don't do a lot of edited stuff. So, and, and also to add on to that, uh, with being the professional that he is, he deserves a professional grade salary, which, um, isn't always within the disc golf budget. So that's one of our challenges as well. There's no, (laughs) no one second guesses or doubts his, his skills and his capabilities and what he puts out. Uh, sometimes it also comes down to just a sheer budget thing. And of course, and, uh, you know, I think, I think we, address that with all of our creative types within the sport of disc golf you look at the photographers some that have come and gone or Mm -hmm. and some of the artists that have come and some of them most of them have gone they come into disc golf and they're ready to to bring their craft and their artistry to what they're doing to what we're doing here in our sport and then they quickly realize oh this is this is how disc golf pays yeah and and, and that that, that's our industry they might be willing to do that for like the first year. Like, oh, I'm I'm just gonna you know I'm gonna get everybody in this in the habit of doing this and and you know get them to know my work and then I'll be able to do. And unfortunately, we haven't seen that. We haven't seen anybody really be able to, or at least hardly anybody really be able to say, okay, I'm gonna come in at, at a real low salary and then it's just not sustainable. Yeah, it's not sustainable. And then try to try to come out with you know a, a larger. That's funny that he's having problems. I, I'm literally trying to shut down Google Chrome on my computer, and it, it doesn't even want to. There we go. It doesn't even want to shut down. So maybe, maybe our computers are not talking I, to one another. I doubt it. No, oh. I think I think he's just the probably internets? rebooting his system because I'm I'm seeing him off Skype right now. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Is there? Oh, oh is there yeah. Any other better uh, graphics that we? Know, can... We probably could go over to this one. <laughs> Uh, go over to go over to the two shot. Well, oh, that's beautiful. Well, yeah. Well, well, uh, well, Mr. Gomez reboots. Uh, so we'll get him back on here. But as we were saying, I'd also l- like to personally thank Josh over at Boom. I've, I talked to him yesterday. I talked to him 
today. A little spoiler alert for my PDGA seats here this weekend, the cold turkey. Uh, I, we're we're going to have Boom completely, fully represented uh, in, in some of the offerings that will take place this weekend at the event uh, for our player pack items. So uh, thank you to Josh. Thank you for supporting Smashbox and the Disc Golf Guy and Joe Mez and everybody else uh, and Disc Golf in general. So thank you so much uh, for all that. So. All right. It looks like we have uh, Mr. Gomez back. Let's. Can, can you hear us? <laughs> I can hear you. Oh, okay. I had to switch to my phone, so my okay. sound card crashed on my computer. A, oh. so- a sound card? Is it like a Sound Blaster Pro 16-bit from like 19? 19- <laughs> oh, it's this fancy <laughs> laptop I spent all kinds of money on. <laughs> you know, uh, you know how that goes. Uh, we oh, do. Yeah. What, what? Well, that's actually a good thing to bring into. You are you are known for quite a bit of the edited stuff and. I've made jokes before that you guys are just machines because you get you 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 bust your ass all day on the course, turn around, go back to the hotel, and edit and render and do whatever you need to do. What are you doing that on? Like, what type of machines are you are you able to push out, pump out that type of stuff with overnight? Uh, well, I mean, when we can when we drive to tournaments, we bring like our nice towers that we have built up. Like we want like the graphics cards and sound cards and all the dual monitors and, you know, all that fancy stuff. And so that makes the process a little bit easier, but we do have this so-called laptop that was, you know, (laughs) anyways, those, those are what we throw on with us, like on air when we had to fly and stuff and they get the job done as well. It just takes a little bit longer, but Yeah. yeah, we just kind of did a lot of research on what, what, for especially on the laptops like what's going to give you the most power for you know being able to fit into a backpack and throw it on the overhead you know on a plane so it's just i right now it's like an msi laptop it's supposed to be like a gaming laptop but it's real good for graphics power so we can pump out pump through the hd video and after Mm -hmm. effects and you know music and all that stuff so yeah i I just i mean techie nerd side here I saw that MSI just updated all their laptops, and they're coming out, and they've got uh, put a bunch of the new processors in for uh, for video editing and gaming. So I'm, I might be in the I might be in the uh, market for one myself for work. So we'll, well I've got one for sale now. <laughs> oh, you, you sold it really well. Yeah, you sold it. Yeah. You really, yeah. you really. You just can't hear anything. Yeah, you don't need that. Uh, so Terry had asked the question about whether or not you think that this was possibly a missed opportunity for Spin TV, seeing as though they have the access to Paul and and what. Uh, how, how would you address that? What do you think about that? Um, I don't know. I mean, Jamie, Jamie's done such an incredible job with Spin TV and all the content. And the way I see it, I guess the best way I could answer that is, I mean, he does the the Ask Dave stuff, and people love that. This, that's a whole other thing that no one's seen before as well. So so he's doing a really great job with, with you know, just like in a lot of us other producers just trying to come up with new ideas of things that people haven't seen that maybe you see on ESPN or you see with your favorite sports or your favorite TV show Discovery Channel or, or whatever. So he's done such a great job with that. And and I can't say to to what I mean, if that was a missed opportunity or what, but, you know, it might have just been something they weren't really interested in putting the money into. And, you know, and. So it's not like we jumped in there and said, <laughs> hey, we're going to take this before anyone else does. Yeah. You know, it was more like. We just approached Paul, and we had talked about it ever since uh, GBO, actually. But the weather was so bad during the practice rounds and and stuff that we didn't even get to to get that off the ground. And so we ended up having to wait till Worlds to even get that. And no one had done it, you know, in that time frame either. So I said, hey, you know, if you're still up for it, let's let's get it done. Awesome. And, and was this the vision that you had? Pretty did it match the vision you had before going into it pretty closely, or or did you film all the stuff and then kind of be like, well, now what can we do to make it above and beyond? Yeah, um, I mean, I had I had the vision from from the very beginning. You know, the main thing that I had visualized in my head was when you see the in the bag when he holds every disc up to the to the camera and the little graphics mm-hmm. pull up like a heads up display and they're like motion track to it and all the information that you could want is right there. That was in my head from the very beginning. Cool. And so when we were shooting all that, you know, I have a vision for what it is. But I myself, like designer-wise and, and you know, graphic <laughs> side of it, I'm just not as savvy on it. So that's when I knew sure. that between Michael helping to illustrate the shot trackers and, and Juan just killing it with the graphics that we had the team to make it work. Where I could just kind of give them a direction and, and they could take it and, and run with it. 
So now it's cool, like, if everyone rips off that format or no? <laughs> I mean, honestly, the the way I see stuff like that is I want I want things like this to, to help motivate us because I've been motivated by, by you guys and by Bobby and by Spin TV. We all have different, you know, things that we take on and we, we excel at. You know, not everyone's going to be good at every single thing. And so I want to, you know, I, I have people that – I see, man. I wish I could do things like that. And then six months down the road, I practice at it enough, and, and I and I, you know, hopefully can give it a shot. And I want that to be the, the way for the people that exist in disc golf media right now, and other people that that are just sitting there, kind of watching from the shadows and wanting to kind of get their own camera and and do things like that. So I mean, that's just the way this is. It's just going to be constantly. I want it to be constantly. We're all just moving up and, and building up the game. So no matter what, across the board, when people are seeing disc golf for the first time. You know, in five years from now, everyone's just, you know, hopefully at that level where it doesn't look like an amateur sport, you know, because we know that the professionals are there, no doubt. You know, they they put so much effort into it. And as media, I think, you know, we can all get to that level as well across the board. Now, you you don't have to give us maybe any details, but do you have anything else up your sleeve like this? Something that maybe you have seen done that you're looking at and going, I can do that better. I have X, Y, and Z idea that I think can elevate this particular type of video above and beyond what we've seen in the past. Do you have any other ideas coming up or don't you dare say live. Don't you dare. <laughs> You guys are safe with live, man. Don't even worry about me. I I barely know how to run Facebook live, so I think y'all are gonna be fine. It, it, that's, I'm not coming I'm not even coming anywhere near that. I, I'm all about the post produce where even though I only have 12 hours to make it, get it out the door, I uh-huh. still that's still 12 more hours than you guys have from <laughs> from the real time. So, do you think that's a, no? But oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say. Really, I just want this to this. We just want to try to set up, you know, for for other players. You know, not brand specific. You know, like we have to do all the Innova players. I mean, we, we'll do pretty much anything that any of the manufacturers would approach us with. But I want it to be like everyone's favorite pro has got some something like this and every different manufacturer will have its own feel and you know would they, that's kind of where we want to look for for the beginning of next season this was just something to kind of get it off the ground so people know what we're talking about when we say we have a little bit of a different approach to, to these videos would the future ones be i mean would be quicker now that you have a, a template down i mean can you oh can absolutely you so now absolutely that you have it, okay. that's not the that's not the ideal turnaround time for for anything <laughs> well, of, of course of course not <laughs> i'm just wondering like and and you know getting it out i mean there's there was no rush on this first one but let's say you know someone came to you and said hey i want you to film our guy and and kind of and and do what you did with paul is there uh now that you've got the template i'm asking it can you can you knock that out quicker Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I, I have cool. no doubt that now that we've done it and we know what we're doing, you know, and not that we're 100 percent set on on this format mm-hmm. at all. I mean, we've definitely gotten plenty of feedback, you know, good and bad. And I'm all for hearing all of it because that's all it's going to do is just make us try uh, take a different b- approach and fix little things here and there and try to improve it every time we do it. Uh, I I think there's going to be this hesitation. I think it was Bobby Brown over at uh, DD that said, "Well, this makes me never want to do another one again." <laughs> but who, who's? <laughs> I got to admit, it feels like there is a hesitation. Like, who wants to be the next guy to release one? Because it's uh, it's kind of like oh. stepping up. It's like stepping up to a, a hole right after someone's ace, and you're like, "Great, now what, I can't improve upon that." <laughs> Like, well, that's why. Or are you bogeying right after you see someone A's? I'll film your in the bag, Terry, <laughs> and then we'll put it out, and then then there we'll we'll drop the bar so everybody can then build it back up. But yeah, I mean it's it's it'll be funny because you, you're exactly right. You said everybody, you know, you hope it kind of inspires and elevates uh, everyone's game, so to speak. And I think that's what we're going to see is some other people. Uh, but it does make it a little more daunting. I've been approached by a few people about doing in the bags, and I haven't really done a lot of them. Um, it, it hasn't been a style or a thing that I've been interested in. But now when I do, I'm like, oh, man, that, now it's really going to suck. If it look, yeah. Well, it's not when, your wor- when your word art pops up, Terry, that's <laughs> yeah. not going to be great. <laughs> but so, I'll get it to blink. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so you, you talked to a couple of minutes ago about about your turnaround time, about only having 12 hours to, to turn around after a, a round is filmed and, and put that out. Is that is that realistic for the long term? Is that something we're we're become spoiled with? Do you think? I mean, you're the one that's doing. You and CCDG are the guys that are doing this the most, and and you're setting a bar that is is 
you know, realistic or not, it can be done. Do you see that as a as a good thing to continue with, or? I mean, with with that formula, I think that that overnight turnaround really um, is beneficial when there isn't live coverage, because people had no way of seeing what happened, um, and so the. The fact with that is when there's live coverage at a tournament, people can see that. They can watch the, the rebroadcast as much as they want. And that might give way to maybe letting that feed, you know, do its job. And that way maybe give us another 12 hours or another day to have, you know, maybe a little bit more of a delayed uh, release. And in that regard is going to give us more time to add in more of the things that we want to add instead of having to maybe cut corners here and there because we're running so short on time. So that could be beneficial to everyone the more that we see, you know, both of these, you know, types of uh, broadcasts existing side by side. And so I'm, I'm just, you know, I've kind of talked with that, uh, talked about that with uh, the, some, some TDs about if that was to exist, if we maybe would, would delay it a little bit. And I can't really say that that would be a bad thing because it's not quite as stressful in the turnaround. It gives us time <laughs> to to uh, to add in more things that we want, you know. And I'll use the example of of our world's coverage. We shot rounds one through five. We did the turnaround time overnight on all on all of the first five rounds through semifinals. And the only one that we needed a little more time was the final nine just because we had to to drive home mm -hmm. and you know all that and we ended up taking a couple more days on it but in my opinion that was our best effort that was our best video at worlds because we were able to add in more of the third angles with the slow motion we were able to do a little more in depth with the with the stats and you know we already had the commentary done so that was you know we did that first thing uh, the next morning after worlds was over but like I said, it, it, it does the, – the quick turnaround time is good, and I know that fans expect it, and, you know, it's great because we're able to, to pull it off, but I'm not, you know, going to say that that's what's going to survive, you know, forever because I, I think that we can make a better product if we, you know, just give it a little bit more buffer time there. I was going to ask how much time. What, if it were up to you and you said, okay, I, I filmed this tournament on Friday – Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like when? When do? When would when you, would like you to, love to like get? If, yeah, if, Fridays. If it, if it were up out. to you, you'd be like, "All right, I'm going to do my thing." Uh, mm -hmm. I, I maybe want to go out for a drink on Saturday <laughs> night. Exactly. Y'all, y'all are always showing all y'all's pictures on Facebook of partying and stuff, and we're like sitting <laughs> oh, in the hotel no. all the time. Like, but I, I can't I, even complain because we did that to ourselves. <laughs> I, I, I literally felt bad at GBO when we had the hotel room right next to you. And you know we would come in and go out to dinner, and there's you there you guys are in your hotel room with the with the shades drawn, like hammering <laughs> stuff out. And I'm like, God, man, that stinks. Like, yeah. they should come out and have some little bit of fun. But yeah, I mean, like I said, we did it to ourselves. I mean, no one told me to to start trying to do overnight videos, but mm -hmm. you know, so that's my I I uh, I, blame I dug you. that hole for myself. So yeah, you I blame did. myself. <laughs> so, no, but I would think. At least a day. I would say instead of the next morning, you know, give it 24 hours, you know, beyond that. So okay. if it was Friday, we might start a Sunday morning release or maybe Saturday night. Just something to give us a little bit more time, you know. And like I said, let the let the live feed do its thing. Let the people watch the rebroadcast because I know that people will watch that as if that, if that, you know, when that's available. And then that way everyone can still get their, you know their little time to their windows of, of sure. viewing opportunities before the next day's coverage rolls out. And maybe that one falls to the wayside for at least for that weekend. Cause I know perpetually those videos are going to get watched, you know, mm -hmm. as people browse through YouTube. But yeah, I would say if we were to try something like that, maybe, maybe more of a, a an extra day just to kind of clean things up so we can take out mistakes and not cut corners and, and make the best product that we possibly can in that amount of time. Uh, I, I had uh, one of my thoughts out there or, or questions that I had uh, put down was, I mean, you hear uh, Internet trolls, a whole other story for that we don't even need to go into because there's so much of it and it's rampant and it's not specific to disc golf. But what's yeah. what's the most either unfair or or maybe even dumbest comment that you perpetually see that is repetitive that you in, in, and, is, in, and maybe we just talked about it. Maybe it's timing. Of videos because people you know know you know 
you get the video while well, the round ended at 5 p.m. It's you know it's 6:15 p.m. Where's the video? But uh, is, is there one theme or or just uh, question or thing that people nag on you that you'd love to just dispel or or address right now? Is there any one thing? Oh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and go off of the one that's <clears throat> fresh on this video, and you already know what it's gonna be because <clears throat> you probably read enough of the comments. And it's it's ads. It's people. I don't get it. I don't want to say too much, but well, I, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it for you. This this video has, and again, I I haven't watched the whole thing. Does it have three ads in it? Three like two it has thirds. Three ads. It has one whole minute and fifteen seconds worth of ads. In, I mean, in, heaven forbid. In a ten we have minute, to pay yeah. for the video. In a ten minute video, let's and let's put that in perspective. For a thirty minute. TV show, you actually have 22 minutes worth of show. Mm -hmm. So that's eight minutes of, of advertising. Good math. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's hard because we're on the fly here. <laughs> so so the fact that they're getting a minute and a half on a 10-minute video, that's still under industry standard if you think about it because you, you project that out and you're you know, you're going to one, two, three, four, four and a half minutes worth of video if it were 30 minutes. So you're, you're looking at people that are complaining that they have to that they have to sit through a, a 15 or a 30 second commercial for somebody to help for what they're gaining on this. So I, I know you don't want to say anything because <laughs> no, I mean, I will, I'm not saying that I'm like <laughs> trying to like walk on eggshells. I'm just saying like, like I get that you don't want to watch ads, but I don't want to, you know, pay my electric bill every month either. I mean, we all have to do, <laughs> you know, you're not, you're not paying Let anything to load that, that video on. up on YouTube or yeah. Facebook, you know, yeah. like I get it. If you're going to like, be the patreon supporters because i know like I, we appreciate that and, and ian and i'm sure y'all have them as well and that's great but think about the percentage of people watching those videos that aren't I and mean, that's all that's all good and well but but you know just it's a 15 second ad here and a 30 second ad here i didn't string together the entire minute and 15 seconds you know we spread them out in the nice little even breaks and so you know it's people are going to talk you know and i you know i'm just giving life to this argument you know by talking about it but i mean we just have to like every video that i watch whenever no matter what it is on youtube or when i'm watching sports stuff or whatever it's gonna have an ad and you know yep. what after after it's over you're gonna get right back to it we have such short memory <laughs> nowadays with watching that stuff it, you you know it doesn't ruin the video in in my opinion and, and it's got to be paid for one way or another well and, and bobby brown a good friend of ours in the media biz and beyond is it says it right here online. He says, I'll say it, the ads pay for the coverage. And like you just said, there's ads in everything. Pick up a magazine. Go pick up a Sports Illustrated or if they even print those anymore. But go pick up a magazine today and tell me how many of those pages are content versus how many of those pages are advertisements. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was looking at Teen or Teen Bop just a few days ago, they – no, I'm just kidding. No, but when you no, look he's not. at – when you look Tiger at – Tiger Beat, <laughs> yeah, <Simmer> 17. <laughs> um, when you look at any – anything uh they all have ads in them and that's yep. what pays some of the bills not all the bills but that's what pays some of the bills and and uh, again i think disc golfers probably by all of our accounts have gotten a little bit spoiled yeah we're all guilty we're all guilty that, of dipping in that little bit well i think we've spoiled them that they haven't had to play by normal rules because everything's been consumed essentially for free on youtube and um yeah, I think we've just we've kind of spoiled mm -hmm. a lot of people that way. So when something goes a little bit more traditional and or we go above and beyond because your video is anything but traditional, we go above and beyond. Well, a little additional support is going to be needed, and and yeah. uh, so I I understand and I that sounds like a very valid uh, exactly uh, an answer I was looking for. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, the only other thing I would think would be turnaround. Your your turnaround, no matter when it is isn't quite quick enough is that is that fair to, is that fair to say according to your uh to most people what you're saying people comment that yeah like no I... matter when it is i mean i feel like you can get a video up in 12 hours and they'll say why wasn't it 10 <laughs> and if it's 10 hours they say well why it, it could have been up in six that was you know there was a lot of birdies on that back nine <laughs> like everybody always knows it should thinks it should be shorter yeah i mean there's gonna be people that come come in i mean complain <laughs> about every little thing i mean we can't give them too much time in the limelight for for those comments nah. to even respond to them at right. the time but but you know the 
the ads thing is just what stuck with me lately. And, you know, at the end of the day, they know that what they're saying is silly because it's got to get paid for it. And they're not going to pay for it. Imagine the backlash I would have had if I would have put this as a as a YouTube rental, as I would have sure. put this video as a, even a dollar. Yeah. That video would not have would not have gotten maybe more than a couple thousand views from and and that's saying a lot that wouldn't that wouldn't have even happened you know well, and, so well you you mentioned you mentioned patreon a little while ago and, and you have a, a patreon if, if for those of you that want to know it's patreon.com slash jomez pro 26 patrons to tw- and your video is viewed per video per yeah yeah so you get yeah you get it says here forty seven dollars per video, assuming that that's not capped at some monthly amount, which they can do. Which yeah. So there's what twenty thousand views on this Macbeth video right now. Well, I'm sure that's outdated. What like, and, and that was this morning. And you have twenty six patrons, like, and people are complaining about ads. As su- <laughs> support support these people. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. We say it all the time. CCDG, Jomez, Terry's got one. You know, if you like what they do, go to Patreon.com and and put in a dollar a video. How hard is that? Or and put a cap on it if you don't want to play, pay more than three bucks a month or something. But but these guys do so much, and then people expect so much. So I have yeah. no I have no sympathy for the people that complain about ads. <laughs> so yeah, me neither. I mean, I tried. We tried not to to respond to it too much because we I mean we, thankfully we did have a lot of fans that would come in on Reddit and YouTube and kind of defend us you know because they know better but it seems like you know how it is sometimes the people that have the most th- negative things to say are the loudest yeah. you know because you you might we might have 400 likes on our video and 8 dislikes and those 8 dislikes are going to comment and say <laughs> hey this is why I disliked it but those 400 people that liked it aren't going to come in but you know that you know that they liked it because they went so far as to do that or they yeah. watched it or they shared it. So just because you're not getting that, you know, mm-hmm. tangible content or that comment that says, hey, great job versus the guy that says, why is there ads or <laughs> why did you even upload this video in the first place? You can't, you know, give them too much because just yeah. because people aren't speaking it out as loudly as, as the, you know, the naysayer doesn't mean that they don't appreciate what you're doing. So, yeah. I mean, and y'all are fully aware of that because we've <laughs> all had our fair share of haters. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, we're excited uh, that you've released this video. Like you said, I think it's going to inspire a lot of other people. I know people like Jamie Thomas, who frequently works with Spin directly. Him and a few of the other editors, I'm sure, are thinking, "Okay, how are we going to, you know, rival this? How are we going to make ours as good or better the next time we want to do one?" Um, I know when I uh, get around to doing one, it will be mediocre at best. Uh, but I'll, I'll definitely be looking at yours and thinking, "Well." It's not going to be I, – what I worried about is I, I, I feel almost obligated if I ever did one soon. It would be like, hey, guys, this is an in-the-bag with so-and-so. It's not going to be as good as Joe Mess Productions, but this is going to be an in-the-bag video anyway, so here you go. But, um, again, you're, you're doing great things. You've got an amazing team. Uh, is, is there anything else you want to share with us, whether it's a, a quick insight into 2017 or anything like that, anything you need to share with us before we let you go tonight? And where people can go to support you. Yeah, I mean, well, you mentioned it, the pa- the Patreon account. Uh, it'd be nice to see it a little higher than 26, but I've never been one to... to I mean, I, I probably could push it a little harder, but, you know, we're just trying to <laughs> trying to get by with... You know, we do a, we have really good sponsorship from, from the, the manufacturers and, and people like Boom and just people that have their own small companies. And, and that's what I had mentioned on when somebody mentioned ads. I said, you know, we like to keep it to a minimum, but I at least like the fact to think about the fact that they might be more relevant to disc golfers. Correct. Um, you know, so you've got Innova and you've got these people that, that are supporting disc golf. And so it's just like this symbiotic relationship, you know, like everyone's benefiting by being involved together. And so, you know, that's, and as far as, uh, 2017, um, we're just, uh, looking at possibly going to the, the Aussie open to work with spin TV nice. on cool. that. So that's pretty exciting. Cause, uh, we've never gone overseas for disc golf, and that's going to be huge for us. It's, you know, looking forward to hopefully making that happen. Awesome. And um, hopefully, just kind of keep hitting uh, GBO. You know, we always love going back there with with Bobby and Dynamic and working alongside you guys. And 
No, nothing really set in stone besides those. You know, that's all we really <laughs> talked about right now. We were just really focused on getting this this video done over the last couple of months. So now it's time to turn our attention to 2017. So hopefully, Sweet. we can keep on doing our thing. All right. Well, what, awesome. I, well, I was going to ask, what do you do for a full time job? I work in the like uh, heavy trucks, like Mack trucks. Okay. I sell parts <laughs> to okay. those trucks when they break down or. People come in working on their own stuff, or they bring it into us. So that would have been that's my what guess. I do every day. <laughs> and, and maybe this is a dumb question, but you'd love to quit that job and be a full-time disc golf videographer, wouldn't you? I don't know. Is my boss watching? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, your dream no, job? No, of that. course, of course. That's that's the dream. So, you know, that's that's all of us. We've thought about that for as long as we, since we've gotten started, or whether you in disc golf, or whether you're you're an artist or something just doing your thing. I mean, everyone's got something that they love to do, you know, in their, in their free time and, and they aspire to get good enough and get enough people behind them to, to do that for, for their full-time job. Because we all, I feel like when we put so much passion into it, if we were able to devote more time into it and have more, you know, money to, to make it better as we get, as we go along, I mean, that's what we want. That's of course, I would love to do this, you know, full time. Well, I'll admit uh, before I let you go, I'll admit your your uh, full time career isn't a little bit more uh, video driven in the sense that I know I, I remember some of your very early videos where you talked about various cameras and and comparisons and kind of doing things of that nature. That always led me to think that you had uh, you have uh, a very uh, technology and video uh, based background where I, for instance, my first camera was a literally a flip, you know, the little flip camera. And I just kind of, you know, trudged along to, you know, to try and put out videos. I mean, you came into disc golf with a, a huge knowledge base of video to begin with, did you not? Yeah, I mean, I, I had gone to school for it. I mean, I went to a pretty small school here where I live, uh, college. And so I went through the program and I wasn't satisfied with it at all. So I really used that as motivation to go and start my own company. Okay. Um, so we would take on anything, you know, weddings or commercials or music videos and just kind of went from there because like I said, I just, from the training we had received, I had received, I just wasn't satisfied with it. And I found no better way to, to, to kind of better my craft than just real world experience and just kind of trial and error and taking on jobs for next to nothing and then slowly just build from there. Correct. And then all the while I was playing disc golf and never once thought to, to combine the two. So <laughs> finally, uh, that happened by accident at, at uh, 2012 Worlds. And it's just that's just how, kind of how that got started. Exactly. So. Awesome. Well, like Bill Gates says, quit quit uh, college and do your own thing or something. I don't know. Mm, all right. I don't think that's an exact <laughs> quote, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paraphrasing him and Steve Jobs. Sure. That's what that was. Yeah, sure. That was a paraphrase. All right. Well, Jonathan, we appreciate your time. Uh, you know, we appreciate your craft. We appreciate your entire team because, you know, nobody knows more than us just how hard you guys work. Uh, we see you out there. And then as we've learned in the video world, I think the more you get into it, the more you watch, the more you can appreciate all the little subtleties that maybe other people don't notice. Uh, on screen and uh, of course all the work you guys are doing are is amazing and uh, we want to just see more of it and i'm sure we'll see you more throughout 2017 yeah likewise i appreciate everything you guys are doing and seeing how you guys have produced uh progressed over the last few years and so it's great to see kind of like i said all of us just kind of bringing each other up and kind of learning as we go and making it better <laughs> for the for the sport as a whole so i appreciate you guys having me on and Hopefully, we'll, like I said, we'll see you out there as well. All right. Sounds good. Have a great night, man. Thanks. All right. You take. All right. See you guys. Bye. Yep. All right. So, hey. Jomez Pro, of course, doing great work out yep. there. So many of you have seen and heard it. Uh, there's always kind of a conversation about the competitiveness or who's covering what tournaments and uh, the different styles and the different things. Uh, we all know they have a certain style. Uh, obviously, they're incredibly professional looking, but they have a certain style. Uh, they have a, I don't want to say a home base, but being in Texas, it makes obviously just geographical sense for things that are around them. They'll go anywhere. Uh, is CCDG uh, as well? Uh, obviously, when somebody said something about a tournament happening in California, everyone was like, well, obviously, CCDG is going to be there. And not that anyone's limited to any geographic region, but we have these channels. And my channel, I'd like to say my channel from Pro's production uh, vantage point as well, 
we have these channels, but we all have different offerings. And sometimes it's a tournament that wants a certain style or wants a certain output. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes timeliness matters. Sometimes camera work is is a higher concern. Every tournament that is uh, that reaches out in terms of coverage, I feel like has a different agenda. And from there, they have then different choices. All of them have different budgets too, but they all have different choices. And I think that's what I love seeing is uh, there's no shortage of tournaments. There's going to be 2,100, 2,500 tournaments yeah. next year. There's clearly the biggest of the big ones. We see the, the PDGA majors and national tours, and we see the pro tour and so on and so forth. But there's a ton of tournaments out there and a lot of people that would like coverage. And one the opportunity that I think most people are missing out on, and I see a couple of TDs out on the board right now, I think more tournaments need to leverage coverage to their benefit. And by that, they need to say, hey, we're thinking about bringing in the, the disc golf guy. We're going to bring him in. We want him to come film this tournament. So here's a sponsorship package, which also gets you some exposure in the video. And I say this all the time. If you're running a tournament and you sell out, we'll just say at 90 people, you sell out and it's a two-day B tier. 90 people on one course are going to play that course, we'll say, four times. So 90 people are going to see 18 different T signs, maybe over the course of four rounds. And this is, I think, on, a, on the high end. But it's those 90 people, those 90 disc golfers with five caddies and 10 family members total. So a little over 100 people are going to see that T sign, if they even look at a T sign. T signs being one of the most popular forms of sponsorship these days. So 100, 120 people are going to see that T sign for the weekend if they pay any attention to it whatsoever to see that Joe's Crab Shack is a sponsor. You take that concept of that T sign and you make it a digital T sign and you put it in a CCDG or a Joe Mez or a Disc Golf Guy video and you're talking about two or three or five or 20,000 people that are going to be able to watch that and see that T sign or whatever it is that they're doing the advertisement. So I think tournament directors needs to need to leverage that opportunity a little bit better because not only are they getting the the views from those two or three or four thousand, but they're also residual in that they can be happening years from now. You know, I've had some amazing sponsors throughout the years, and I think of a Disc Nation who's was really great to me. They were one of my, my primary sponsors in say 2011. If someone goes back and watches a world's video from 2011 that I put out, Disc Nation's still getting the advertising of for course. it. Of course. So, and if it's a good video, hopefully it's getting seen uh, a bunch because we're getting more and more new players. So, mm -hmm. I think those are a way. Sorry if that's a kind of a random rant, but a little bit. I, I, TDs, TDs can leverage their coverage. Uh, I think to help then uh, gain more sponsorships or maybe help offset the cost and of the I, coverage I, that they want to have. Before I get into my, my next statement, I think that's really good for an event that is looking to grow and expand. Correct. If, if you're content with your one-day or two-day 90-player B tier that you never want to see turn into an A tier, maybe that's not right for you. If you're looking to improve your, your coverage, improve your event, and bring in new people and show off your course or your club or your event, that's when you really need to look into the coverage. But... Um, I'm going to harp on it just a couple more minutes when I say, when I asked him, you know, if that's what he'd love to do for us. I mean, I knew what the answer was, but support people that do this stuff. Go out to Patreon slash Jomez Pro slash Central Coast Disc Golf or CCDG. You can find it. I don't know off the top of my head. I just know Jomez because I was looking at it. The Disc Golf Guy. And like I said, a dollar. A dollar dollar a video isn't going to kill you especially especially with the number of videos that like someone like Jomez puts out they're not cranking out a video every day you know you may only pay eight bucks a year yeah but if a lot of us did that that's going to improve his coverage that's going to lower his cost for events to have to get him to go out there and it's going to it's going to prompt him to be able to go out there and afford to go out there knowing that okay well I know that I have $300 coming for each video that I put out from this weekend. I, I can for sure fly there with my crew. And then anything above and beyond that is is gravy. So just take the time. If you see someone, and I think I'll say this too to all the video creators, Joma, CCDG, Terry, whoever, if you have a Patreon, plug it. Mm. Like I've told this to Terry a dozen times, like put a little 30 second thing at the end of your video. 
If you liked what you watch, please support me on patreon.com slash disc golf guy. It's oh, a, what a good idea. I should have you I'm, do my blog. Good ideas. I'll pay you. <laughs> good, good ideas, not so much on the follow through. So I'm just saying all these guys should be pushing this more to get that out there because 26 people is a joke for what he's doing. I mean, and granted, he's getting paid in other ways, but you know, it, it, he wouldn't have to get those ads if he if he was pulling in a thousand dollars a video. I'm just saying. So I'm gonna get off my soapbox now, and uh, we're gonna get uh, DG Mike on the line here in a couple what? Of minutes. DG Mike, we are, we are. Speaking of raising money for great causes, all while looking at facial hair, uh, <laughs> DG Mike's got uh, the combo that you want to hear about. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to be bringing up DG Mike Fierke out of Illinois here in just a few moments. We're going to see if we can get him on the line. Uh, some, I, I, I'm not sure if we have him or uh, is that is that Wyatt Earp? I'm not sure. I don't know, but welcome to the show, DG Mike. How are we doing tonight, buddy? Oh, and uh, uh, we can't hear you we now. We need your audio, DG Mike thought he had it you're, tested. Not, you're not muted on my side so. maybe your mustache got in the way that's true his mustache might be blocking <laughs> the audio <laughs> that wouldn't be the first time <laughs> <laughs> nope uh so we're gonna hold on uh in just a moment here uh, for our audio listeners dg mike's gonna double check uh not sure if his skype connections and his options uh ha- if he has to select which microphone maybe on skype uh in terms of how it's coming in or if his Microphone is fully plugged in on his headset. Yeah, for instance, if he were if he were to go to tools and options and check audio, just to see where that is. But, <laughs> just as, as um, one idea. So what DG Mike is here, and I'll, I'll we'll give a preface it. Uh, no shave November. So basically, not shaving in the month of November to support. Do you know what it's to support? Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer. Bingo. So that's good. <laughs> So once Thanks. <laughs> you got any other games for me to play? Uh, mm, no. Okay. Uh, so Mike's going to get this figured out. Um, do we want to give away the aviator real quick here? If you've got a good way to do it. Did he give us I, a good way to do it? Bobby Brown? No. He, cool no, Daddy he, Slick Breeze? No, he said that, uh, that, that, we should, that we should pick it out. Oh. Hmm. That's a, that's a good idea. So what I'm going to do here is I'm looking right now at Mike Fierke's donation amount the first person in the chat to tell me how much money is currently donated will get the aviator and it has to be in the youtube chat and you have to double whatever the number is <laughs> yes <laughs> so so please go ahead that uh tell me how much money right now mike fierke's uh donation amount is up to and you will pull in not you ronald harkey mr google the best google man i know um and you should do I, a screenshot of that it, with your little thing. it is it is the exact amount i'm looking for it, it's it's close go back to that web page so i can see it so i can okay uh cool. so so for, th- for all those that uh, uh don't know of course uh as always youtube is the place to interact with us we do that for the after show as well as during ray the woodruff show. Ray, ray woodruff, woodruff. nailed it uh, Ray Woodruff nailed it with twenty four thirty four. So right now, DG Mike has raised two thousand four hundred thirty four dollars. You can find that on the Movember Foundation. Uh, he is a four year Mobro apparently, uh, and we are uh, we're gonna we're gonna redial Mister Fierke here, and and hopefully get uh, get some audio out of him. That would be nice. That would be. I mean, we we want to hear what he has to say. <laughs> and Ronald Harkey says he's won prizes without Googling. Uh, no, but you are the best Googler out there other than me, probably. So, uh, what happens if you unplug your headphones? Hey. Nope. Nope, not so much. Wow. We are just... And this guy... Okay, so uh, we were talking about Patreon before. We were talking about supporting vloggers and people that produce disc golf content you can skip right over dg mike <laughs> no but dg mike i'm going to make a quick plug for him he also does make disc golf videos uh he makes vlogs when he goes on these events uh, often he's found traveling with the likes of uh of a dana vici a dana uh but he also makes videos 
uh, hence the nickname DG Mike. So uh, be sure you can check out his channel as well. I'm sure we'll talk about that more once we get him officially on the line. Hey, good to see uh, some of our uh, regulars out there. Wes Kepi, uh, Patrick Showalter. Patrick, good to see you, buddy. Dan Harbeck, one of our favorite smashies, who's playing in this weekend's Cold Turkey. Good to see you out on the board. Tyler Durden is checked in every every uh, week for us, as is Ray Woodruff. Ray, in fact, in charge of the uh, the Rocky Mountain Women's Disc Golf Championships, one of the largest and greatest women's only disc golf tournaments of the year. Hey, I'm getting something. I, I'm, oh, you can hear me. I'm no. starting to be able to hear you now, Mister. Oh my uh, Mr. Mike. goodness! All right. All right, so send me. Go ahead and send me your video now. Now that I uh, I called you the via audio, so awesome. You know, we <sighs> sorry are, guys. No, that's, that's okay. We it happens. I was trying to set up uh, an external microphone that I bought from Jomez to record a voice. Ah, over. there's your problem. <laughs> I there's... swear. I'm I, not even kidding. Uh, what did I just say? Jomez can't do live, and apparently their equipment can't. <laughs> no, not at oh, all. That's that's hilarious because that's true. Because I think I saw you on on the Facebook media group purchase the microphone from Jomez earlier this year. So, welcome to the show, DG Mike. I think you've been on before. For I have I have. Um, why don't you go ahead and just give a I gave a quick breakdown of the you know what your fundraising is for, but why don't you go ahead and give uh, more of a, a good explanation than what I did? So um, basically November is uh, you grow a mustache for the month of November um, in support of testicular cancer, prostate cancer, and most importantly for me, men's mental health. Um, they raise all this money uh, you know in in several different countries and the money gets distributed through the charity to a bunch of different um, worthwhile causes that uh, really range from everything, like I said, prostate cancer all the way to mental health. And this year they've added a program to focus on suicide prevention. So uh, when did this come about and, and how did you, know, you get involved uh, with all of this? So the charity started... Um, several years ago, I think in 2003. Um, but it's been growing ever since the first year, they actually didn't raise any money. Um, but for me, uh, I got involved at first just because it was a good reason to grow a mustache. <laughs> I thought that, Hey, I mean, I might as well give it a shot. I've always was growing a beard and, um, just wanted to give it a, a shot to see how it looked. And it turns out that over the course of doing that, I learned more about the charity um, and you know, it just became something that was important to me. I think removing the stigma surrounding a lot of men's health issues is super important. Um, and for me personally, uh, you know, making people aware that it's okay to go talk to somebody or see a therapist if you're having difficulty, um, with your mental well being. And, uh, that's really what drove me to participate so much in the charity. Okay. Well, and, and, let's be real there's a certain macho-ness that people some men feel like well i you know i can just get through this i can power through this or this is no big deal or or i don't need to talk to somebody about my feelings let's i mean unfortunately there's plenty of men that have this pseudo macho uh outlook on it and and as you just said anybody should feel comfortable going and getting the help and talking to anyone uh, about whatever their situation may be, mental or otherwise. Uh, and, and I think that's a really powerful message that kind of gets lost in some of our uh, society today and probably has been lost for quite some time. Exactly, yeah, and, and that's what it's all about. I mean, um, you know, a lot of people who participate in Movember, they go into the month with a mustache kind of pre-grown or a beard and they shave it in. And that's cool. That, that raises awareness for the charity, but... To signify, like you're saying, you know, we're all in it together. We all have to face the same issues as men together. That's why they want everybody to shave clean at the beginning of the month to signify a kind of unity. You know, we're all at the same level. We're all starting at the same spot. Let's let's move forward and let's, you know, let's do some good here. Okay. Now, uh, what are some of the things... Uh, throughout the f last few years, I know you've probably taken on a couple different uh, avenues and and fundraising efforts and and ways to, uh, you know, help not only raise the awareness but to actual actually raise funds. What are what are some of the things that you've tried? 
So over the last couple of years, what I've been doing is running an annual disc golf tournament. I try to do it either at the beginning of November or um, just before in October so that folks in my area um, have a chance to learn about the charity and sign up. Um, last year we raised uh, around $750, and this year um, in one day we raised $1,750. Um, which was awesome. This And this comes in part from people just playing in the event. Um, it was a bring-your-own-partner doubles, you know, a casual, relaxed event. Um, but $30 from each team goes directly to Movember. Um, everybody also had the opportunity to donate uh, by purchasing, I guess you could say, a Movember disc. If they donated $20 or more, they would get a, a Movember wizard. Um, which Gateway kindly, you know, donated a few extras and some X outs and things like that, which was awesome. Um, and this year we actually had a barber come to the course and give people haircuts and trims. Um, and she donated all the money to Movember as well. So, wow. yeah, so I'm trying to just grow the tournament. Um, it's really been good in sh the Chicago area to kind of spread awareness of the charity and uh, just get people involved. Well, we saw you on Chicago television as well, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. I was actually on Good Day Chicago. Um, my girlfriend was uh, force, forcefully insisted with <laughs> Movember that I'd be on the show. So she works for um, Good Day Chicago. And, uh, yeah, she was pretty adamant about me going on, which was a cool experience uh, overall. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was just neat. Well, and for and to slightly change uh, into a little media conversation quickly, some of you may recognize this sweet, sultry voice of DG Mike here as he <laughs> as he stepped in during the the ledge stone. Is that where uh, is that where yep. we first heard you? And I and I I hope I, I promise people it won't be the last. This is uh, <laughs> DG Mike. Uh, so graciously stepped in and helped out Smashbox. You were calling the action uh, that I believe we saw on Hole 17 over at Eureka. Is that where uh, you were kind of stationed? You were with one of our other cameramen, and uh, we could you know, kind of throw it back to you when, uh, when the action was slow on the leader card, and we threw it over to you. And uh, uh, I, I don't know. Everybody said they wanted you and wanted to kick me off the broadcast yet again. So <laughs> it sounds, it sounds yeah, like we no, need a little was, more of you. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I wish I, I would have prepared a little bit better for it, but it was a good time and uh, getting to know the camera guy a little bit and watching, being able to watch um, how some of the other players approach the holes was nice as well, um, being that, you know, I only obviously saw the people that I played with. Um, it was it was a great experience, and yeah, thanks again for that. No, well, thank you for stepping in and, and helping us out and helping the broadcast out. Uh, like I said, we'd love to find more ways to incorporate um, and then speaking of incorporating, are there other ways, uh, you know, other disc golfers or, you know, do you, do you recommend that people start their own team right now or maybe it's too late for that, but can, can find ways to contribute to you and, and what you have going on? Uh, what are some of the ways that people should go about that and for this year? And then we'll, we'll talk about, you know, the future years, but what about this year? Yeah. So, um, this year, uh, you can go to, um, mobro.co slash Ferky, that's F-I-E-R-K-E, -E. um, and through that page, you can donate directly to my fundraising efforts. Um, I've also started a page called Disc Golfers for Men's Health, which you can search as well, and uh, one of your, you know, one of your good viewers and a buddy of mine, Dan Harbeck, he donated a hundred bucks to that team, which was huge. Um, thank you again, Dan. Um, Another way people can donate or really just raise awareness is just talking about it. Um, you know, you might see a lot of people around with a mustache, you know, just stop, maybe have a conversation with them and learn a little bit more about the charity that you haven't already learned from me. Uh, I think, you know, the main thing is making people aware that, yeah, we have a mustache and we may look a little silly for a few weeks, but it's for an important cause. And as long as people get that message, um, really, I think it's up to them to to drive the, I don't know, inquiry in their own mind to go and look and find a little more information out for themselves, too. 
Okay. Well, it's uh, it's great. Do you have plans for, say, 2017? I'm sure uh, you, I know you're an incredibly bright guy, but do you are you already thinking about how can you improve year after year and some of the steps you can take to, to not only create more awareness but to raise a little bit more money? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously going to add some different things to the disc golf event. Um, you know, a buddy of mine, Jeremy Buzia, Buzia, I don't even know how his last name is pronounced. He's out of Indiana. Um, he also ran a tournament, uh, a disc golf tournament for November. Um, the weekend after I did, uh, we didn't have a chance to coordinate quite as much this year. Um, next year we would like to do kind of more of a series where people will get points and then ultimately there'll be awards at the end. So that's just one idea we've got right now. Um, and I hope to communicate with Movember, um, the corporate side of it, and kind of work some more things out with them in the coming years. Now, have you done anything in previous years uh, for any kind of official uh, mustache uh, uh, contest or something that kind of denotes a winner or anything of that nature? Has there been any official contest? Um, I have not done anything like that. Okay. No. Um, this year actually at the tournament, one cool thing that I did too, uh, I contacted, um, uh, Mr. Jeff Ash of brainwave dyes and, uh, purchased some mustache dyed discs. If you watch the segment that I did on Fox, uh, the Fox news show, I actually brought one of the discs on the show with me there. Um, and one of those discs I gave away to, uh, the participant in the tournament that had the best mustache. Nice. <clears throat> nice. Yeah. And for, and for those that, you know, are, are are into something like this, I noticed I just made a donation and you get a special uh Snapchat snap uh what is it? A a, a special lens they call it, a filter. Uh a nice little mustache one it appears to be. So if you if you make a donation to uh to Mr. Mike here, you'll get uh, you'll get your own little Snapchat filter. Awesome. Thank you, Johnny. Appreciate it. Of course. Yeah, and what I would like to do sometime, uh, I, I'm sure we could give all year, but what I'd like to do sometime in the next week or so is uh, maybe I'll raffle off or auction off some kind of a disc or something like that, uh, and then just have all the proceeds go directly to you. Uh, I hope you're cool. You Are you okay with that? Would that be all right? <laughs> That's awesome. It was Jared. just something Thank I just you. thought of now, and I'm 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 not a. <laughs> that, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's, that's we'll, awesome. That, we'll, that was we'll a big something. part of how we generated um, the seventeen hundred dollars on at the tournament. People donated raffle items to me, you know, weeks and weeks in advance. People who couldn't make it, and uh, I think we ended up raising like seven hundred and fifty dollars from the raffle alone. So that's a great way to to raise money. Too. Yeah. One second. Let let me tease everyone. I think I oh, know geez. what I'm going to do. Hold on. So for anyone that is, again, we're going to repeat this because it is such an important thing. Uh, for anyone interested in donating to Mike, it's mobro.co, so M-O-B-R-O dot C-O slash Fierke, F-I-E-R-K-E. Um, and right now he's at 2444. I would love if by maybe, maybe by the end of the week, because this is going to get released, maybe we can get him up to like... 54 40 no wow. I, I, I would i would love to see it like 2700 you know i'm Come gonna set now. i'm gonna set a realistic awesome. goal i'm gonna set a realistic goal you know if everyone goes out there and just gives five bucks i know there's a couple options you can give uh there is an other box if you don't want to give the pre-set amount just just uh just throw mike some uh throw mike a couple bucks on this and I, I feel like tonight I'm asking everyone to give their money away. Uh, uh, we got Patreon, we got Mike, but to, and, uh, you know what? If you have if you have to do this once a year, I got no problem with that. I don't tend to ask people to spend money a lot usually, but but please go ahead and support some of the people that we have on and their and their endeavors. So well, I think he's sported some questionable mustaches in the past. So oh, he this has. Seems, yeah. This seems uh, <laughs> appropriate. Uh, what I've got here, um, and, and he's always we, I've said it before. He's always so gracious. This is a uh, Paul McBeth signed. Nude Destroyer. So it's a bottom stamp, as, as some refer to it. It's a bottom stamp, Star Destroyer, uh, max weight, 175. But I just more heard Paul Macbeth nude. Yeah, and more importantly, <laughs> it's got a Paul Macbeth autograph. And, and I talk to Paul, and I see him a number of times throughout the year, and I have him sign various things. And I oh, I don't always have like an exact idea in mind. And this literally was just sitting over there in a stack of, of my plastic. In my basement for some reason. In his basement. <laughs> and uh, so this seems very appropriate. Uh, why not? It's sitting in front of me, and I think it's a great item. It's got a 
little bit of swirl. I handpicked this from the Innova factory myself and uh, and then had Paul sign it for some random reason. And I guess this, there's no better random reason so than uh, for this. So what I'll do is I'll put this out somewhere as some form of an auction. Uh, I'll note it. It'll be on Facebook. Uh, probably we'll, in like a Innova yep. or a Dollar we'll, Disc Golf auction or we something. We will link to it on Smashbox's yep, we'll link Facebook to it. page as well, so everyone here listening can find it. So this will be uh, that will be the official item, and then every penny raised uh, from that, I'll, I'll eat the shipping and all that other stuff. But every penny raised, well, I'll ultimately turn around and donate straight uh, straight over to Mike's uh, account here. So look for that in the next few days. Uh, I'll, I'll make a post for it and then uh, make it up on Facebook so everybody knows that it's happening. Oh, Dan Harbeck's got the opening bid at forty dollars. Oh, nice! Yeah, that's yeah. a nice looking frisbee. It is beautiful. So, thank you to Paul for signing it, and uh, hope this uh, this qualifies as a good cause for you, Paul. I'm sure it is. Like I said, I think he's sported some questionable facial facial hair in the past. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, I know he's on board. And questionable hairdos. <laughs> I mean, not just let's not keep it to the face. I mean, everything. Now, about you, the, now you're just going. Now you're just. Year? Now you're just being yeah, mean. Now you're just job. being mean. <laughs> You're just being oh, mean man. to one of our, our one of our uh, partners here in crime, uh, <laughs> uh, DG Mike. I may or may not uh, see you this weekend. Is that true? Last year you made a vlog of it. You came up to Wisconsin, played in a little cold turkey uh, action that I ran, a, a PDJC tier. Uh, I may or may not see you come Saturday. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Well, I mean, I checked the weather and it looked like it was going to be a high of about high 40s. So 40 birdies. I think- that's not bad. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to try to go. Uh, it seems like uh, my co-pilot's in, so I might try to get one last tournament in before the end of the year. Awesome. Well, yeah. uh, that would be awesome. Uh, Ray Woodruff raised the bid to 50. Dan Harbeck's got it at 55. So, again, I'll get it out on Facebook, and uh, unless it gets crazy here tonight, it'll have at least an opening bid of 55 by Dan Harbeck. So appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. All going straight to dg mike's uh, account so thank you awesome really pl- appreciate that terry thank yeah, you no no problem uh a- anything else we need to cover uh, mike obviously a uh, very important subject matter serious but uh important and ties to disc golf which is why it was a, a perfect fit to have you but anything else we need to cover here for n- for tonight no i think you summed it up nicely i mean um i really made the connection more to disc golf when we went into all the St. Jude stuff last year, right? Um, mm-hmm. To try to help grow the sport, we have to partner with organizations that have contacts in the community. Um, St. Jude, Movember, these are charities that have a reach far beyond disc golf. And if you can associate the two together and make people aware that disc golf is there and supporting these causes, it's all the better for everybody. And it gets more money donated to the charity as well. So, yeah, it's all good. Well, and that's uh, it, that's exactly it because it becomes we it becomes such a win win for everybody, and it's one thing that disc golf kind of has the luxury of tying to these uh, to these organizations, and these organizations there in turn can uh, recognize and realize that disc golf exists. I mean, those are all great PR things, but on top of it, the actual causes are so awesome as well. So Correct. it's like it's yeah. such a win win for all of us and 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 i know you just said you know i feel like we're asking you know always asking for money i i think there's going to be a number of things every year and that we're going to continue to see as causes and and then individuals like yourself uh dg mike are going to have causes that are yet even a little bit more specific to them or that they feel a little bit more passionate about and i know you helped with uh the saint jude fundraising and you'll probably always support that um, eventually we may have a dozen, uh, causes and then one or two on your own besides that. But, and you know, if, if disc golf supports a dozen causes, you can support them all or you pick one or two, th- Yeah, you know, that and that, you, and that, that you really hone in on what, what, exactly. what really you feel, uh, caters to what, you know, to your specific background or what really tugs at your heartstrings or whatever it may be, whatever reason. Um, I'm going to give one more shout out to, to Ray Woodruff, who I see, just uh just drop ten dollars donation so thanks a lot ray uh, nice thank Mike. you ray already so. officially in your account yep uh we can see it online so that's awesome uh awesome. to see you had a target goal uh and goals are meant to be exceeded here you had a target goal of 2000 this year and you're yeah. at 2454 where, where where did the 2000 uh, where did the 2000 number come from not where not the, the people but <laughs> where where did that number come from on your end I think I've just increased it little by little every year. I think the first year I started at maybe 500, and I I don't think I reached my goal. 
Um, and then I bumped it up to a thousand the next year. And then the following year was when I ran the first disc golf tournament. So I crushed my goal and then actually, um, moved it and created a stretch goal. So I may do that this year, um, bring it up to maybe 2750, uh, just to see, you know, if I can, you know, reach, reach another, another plateau. So, um, yeah, uh, I just kind of picked it arbitrarily as another increase from where I started. Um, but yeah, just happy to exceed it. Awesome. Well, uh, we got some great support out there, some great golfers, some great smashies specifically. Uh, so we thank all of you guys and, and hopefully we raise a few more dollars on Facebook. And I know you have an outreach as well that you'll continue to, uh, to, uh, be in contact with and hopefully raise some more money and, uh, all around really good stuff. Absolutely. And thank you guys again for having me on. Really appreciate you helping me uh, spread the good word. Well, like I said, it was a, a pr- I mean, it, it would be great to have you any given uh, you know, week out of the year to talk about this. But uh, the way you tie it into disc golf, the way you're passionate about disc golf and then can uh, how we can uh, you know, mesh the two uh, makes perfect sense. And we're glad here at Smashbox to, to help exploit and expose that for you. Thank you. All right, pal. Well, we're going to cut you loose. We appreciate your time, of course. Looking g- Oh, you did just – okay. I wasn't – you said you were running late, and I figured it was a GQ shoot again. Um, <laughs> so it looks like you got in from that. So we appreciate you taking the time to join us, and hopefully we'll see you uh, come Saturday morning. Yep, absolutely. Thanks again, guys. All right, get signed up. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Bye, Johnny. Bye, Have Terry. a good night. All right, and that, of course, DG Mike uh, doing some good things. You know, when you're talking about being on TV in the Chicagoland area – uh, having a disc in your hand is great, but then uh, doing what he's doing for Movember and uh, just raising all that awareness in such a uh, populated area uh, is uh, all good stuff. And we appreciate it, and we appreciate his support and his candor on the course and everything else think, that he does. I don't think we ask for money a lot. No, I know, but I, it was just funny when you were And then I, I just think this this particular episode, I'm saying just – support people in disc golf and whether yeah. it's charity like mike or whether it's you know uh, a production company like joe mess or ccdg or terry uh or, or or smashbox you know if you want to throw some support our way you can always oh, go to oh. smashbox.tv slash support blink good one um, i like that so, i like that so yes but or josh barnhill over at boom or chris yeah, all, or chris finn over at dude all, all of those, those companies that are working so hard within our industry to then help elevate the industry i think that's uh I, I, that's going to be huge and we mm-hmm. can you know we need to continue to uh push those people up Correct. and uh, make things happen. So uh, David Heasley's out on the board. MB Heasley looking to play this weekend at this uh, C tier I keep referencing. Uh, very excited. Now Dave Heasley's a special type of individual. I think I saw some registrations come in from him. He is a teacher, and uh, I, I saw a number of registrations come in that had his name on the payment category, but he, he was probably signing up four or so of his students uh, so it's great to see old Teach helping out, um, <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure if he sponsored them or not, but he at least helped get, get them signed up for this weekend, and so we're looking forward to seeing him. And then I know last year uh, at an event, or maybe more than one event, he actually came out and caddied for some of his students, and what a what a unique experience to go compete in an event, a non-school-based function at an event on a weekend, and then your teacher shows up and <laughs> caddies for you. That's, uh, that's a special. Special kind of guy there. Very cool. Very dedicated guy. Yes, he says he has four playing this year uh, in in the event this weekend. So awesome. We'll be looking forward to seeing him. So I think now is a good time for us to give away the Japan Open. Oh wait, I didn't disc. enter my guess yet. That's oh, too late. Um, the Japan Open disc. Uh, again, what I had people do was go out to our Smashbox Facebook page. Just I put a post out there. People guessed a number between one and ten thousand, and now I'm going to go to random.org and get that All right. nailed down. And you've got that so, shown for everybody? Uh, I'm about to show it, Terry. Okay. I'm, I'm, right I'm saying you're bringing it up on screen. So for mm-hmm. those that don't know, random.org has become a uh, pretty much a standard, I, I know for a lot of different reasons within uh, the internet, but a standard for generating random numbers for some of the giveaways that we at least find within disc golf, whether it's raffle related or whatever. We don't need to get into some of those legalities. But uh, <laughs> random.org is one of those most, is uh, kind of the, 
the standard for uh, sites to do this. Uh, both numbers one and ten thousand here are inclusive yep. of this drawing. So when Johnny V hits the generate button, it will do just that. Give us a random number between one and ten thousand, and uh, you're going to go with the number that's closest number above or below. Above or below. Yep. And that so, person, and then the and if 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 there's a tie, it goes to the f- person who posted first. Ooh. So, because I I did look at some of the the list, and we had some people repeat some numbers like uh, two 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 two, two 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 two. Yeah, I, I saw two people post out there, and, and I'll have to figure out who exactly is the first one by going out to the the Facebook page. But right now, I've got a spreadsheet of everybody's name and number. And I'm going to figure out who's hopefully. Oh, uh, hold on! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people picked seven, 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 seven. All you had to do is hit show previous and look at numbers. So, <laughs> so right there, people are, are are lowering their lowering their odds. So mm. and making the odds better for other people. So right now, I am going to. You have approximately how many people participated? Uh, there's approximately three hundred and sixty one, and I know there's one entry that I think someone put in. Uh, I said between one and ten thousand, and somebody put in fifty five thousand <laughs> five hundred and fifty five. I'm assuming that meant five thousand five hundred fifty five, but. There was already three of those as well. So. Okay, so they don't get benefit. So they're, they're, it's not going to matter. So um, if, if you want to be official, you need to go up to the uh, <laughs> uh, when you go to random.org, Typically, it, as far oh, I, the I rules, have to refresh it. Just you to, have to refresh it so okay. everybody knows, and then you also have to go to the security certificate on the top, the little uh, right green here? lock. Yep, click on that so everyone knows you're officially dealing and you haven't, uh, in fact, uh, like recreated altered. the random.org. Yes. I'm and, just telling you how, how we do it on the internet. Okay. I, I'm, the, I've, never, this official. I've never done a raffle So you're the showing internet, the so. security, uh, you've refreshed it at least once, and now you can generate All your right, number. So now I'm going to change this to 10,000. Okay. And I'm going to hit... Dun, dun, dun. Drum roll, please. Generate! 9,000. 217. So That's I'm a gonna, high one. That is a high one. I'm kind of surprised. So it oh. looks like, ooh, I'm going to go with the winner is Kenny Spurla at 9,210. Uh, he is the closest one out there. So nice. he was seven. He was seven numbers off. Congratulations. And I'll, uh, just so everyone can see the spreadsheet, it's right here. Kenny Spurla, 9,210. I will go on Facebook and take a look at uh, Kenny's thing. I will notify him. We will get that in. Uh, we, will, we will get that to him, so he will pull in this one fifty-eight point eight gram hero Japan Open Star Banshee. So uh, this worked out pretty well. I would say it was not too tough to to <laughs> do this. So I think that in the future we can give away more prizes to people who aren't necessarily listening live. Yeah, some people who do, having the whole week. Have the whole week to do this, and you know, as much as we love to give away, like the Aviator that we gave away thanks to Dynamic Disc Day, was strictly for a live the live broadcast. But we do want to also support the people that listen via audio sometimes. Not as much as the live people. There's a premium. There's a premium to, to always to watching to on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Central. Yes, there is a premium. So, so. congratulations to Kenny Spurla. We will get that. Uh, we'll get all contacted with you and uh, get that out to you. So, uh oh, and I'm also catching wind, and this is going to give you guys a little additional reason to stay tuned tonight. Yuli has checked in. He's saying that his internet is not top notch. However, he does want to have a Yuli store giveaway. Jeez. And we're so asking we'll do for a- money, and we're giving stuff away. What a great night! Oh my gosh! Why would you listen to any other podcast? <laughs> um, so we're gonna have a Yuli store. Yuli giveaway in the after show, which will be shortly. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to wrap this up here pretty soon, uh, but we will be having Yuli uh, for the after show, or we're going to have a question from him. He says he has a good one, so stay tuned for the after show so that uh, we can give something away from Yuli store. And a quick reminder then, uh, following Johnny V's idea, one to seven thousand is your range. If you go out to the Disc Golf Guys fan page on Facebook, same thing. Put in a number between one and seven thousand. Same exact rules. And uh, next week, I guess we can draw. I'll draw for that. And I think I said it would be at least uh, two discs and some other swag. So uh, if you go out to the fan page, you have to like the fan page. Oh, we got to double check that Kenny likes Smashbox already, or he'll be disqualified. 
Oh, that's true. I did say you need you needed to like it. I'll, I'll, you do I'll, need to make sure you like it. I'll go out there and take a look. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, thank you guys uh, so much uh, for participating in that. As Johnny said, we'll find some more clever and unique ways to uh, continue to give away stuff. Thanks to all of our sponsors. Uh, we we've had a number and we'll continue to have a bunch of them. Uh, but uh, thank you guys all so much. I, I think of Yuli right away. I think of uh, Discraft, who's helped us out. Spinners on the Green, Mike and Michelle Cousins, Miles from uh, Paragon, Miles Parkhill over at Paragon Disc Golf, um, uh, along with DD and everyone else. We've we've always had such a, a plethora. I think Disc Golf Nerd has talked about uh, some giveaway stuff. So thank all of you guys uh, for helping us out. Any sponsors we've ever had here? Uh, there, there. We'll we'll talk about in the after show. There was okay. an, there was an additional giveaway as well. There, so. There's another one yet. Yeah, somebody had reached out to us and said he did <sighs> not. Giveaway. He didn't necessarily want to be uh, recognized, recognized, but he he has a disc he'd like to give away. So we'll figure well, out. We... I told him to figure out a way to give it to us, but. So. Okay. Well, and uh, yeah, because this will probably this will uh, by release of this look for something I've never done before. I'm going to give myself another quick plug. Ken, Ken, Kenny Sperla is a Smashbox TV oh, fan, so he, he is um, completely qualified. This uh, look for either uh, sometime this week, uh, in the next few days, maybe even as early as Friday. Uh, Disc Golf Guy is going to be doing some mystery box sales, putting a ton of goodies into a box. You don't know what they are, but uh, offering up a limited number of those that are going to have a lot of goodies in them as well. So look for those coming uh, and releasing in the next few days as well. Those will be on the, f the Facebooks. I'll probably make a YouTube video out of it too. But anyway. All right. I think we can wrap things up. Not That's bad for, uh, yeah. um, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, I think we covered a, a lot. A few adjustments tonight. We made a few adjustments. Yeah, we, we had some amazing uh, info to, to share with everyone. Yeah. So. Uh, I would like to go ahead and quickly thank uh, Mr. Jonathan Gomez uh, for his videos, his work, his, his relentless efforts, his collaboration, his teamwork, uh, you know, everything that he's doing, his entire crew. Uh, it's not just him. It's, it's everyone that he's collaborated with, including us at Smashbox. So we'd, of course, again, like to thank him and for raising the bar on the In the Bag videos and, uh, and his time here tonight. We'd also like to thank DG Mike, Mike Fierke for uh, giving us his updates and insights into raising awareness for various causes and our disc golf community for embracing those and helping support them. Uh, great smashies like Dan Harbeck, Ray Woodruff are, are just two that jump out as amazing individuals that are, are supporting us on so many different levels and supporting the causes that are out there. So for Johnny V and myself, this has been podcast number 120. We're going to have an after show. We're going to have some more giveaways. We're going to talk about some other random things. And we'll see you then when you step inside the Smashbox. Well, <laughs> welcome to Smashbox episode 120 after show. Uh, a slightly longer break than we normally take. Terry got up and got us uh, some bottles of water yeah. out, of my, out of my fridge. Thanks. Going, I'm going hard tonight. Yeah, well, it's because I finished my other drink. So, Whew, what a great for the, for those of you who are listening audio, and if you if you haven't listened to the show that we just got done with. Um, Really take the time. I thought it was it was concise. There was a couple of little hiccups, but you know what? That, that happens sometimes when you do a live show. But go ahead and take a listen. I think we we had a really good show tonight. It was pretty smooth and quick. Uh, You're and welcome. I, I was pretty happy about that. <laughs> uh, no, we did. And and again, we've said it before. We don't always have uh, every single guest in a time slot lined up perfectly. And tonight, uh, l very late in the game, I had reached out to both DG Mike as well as Jonathan Gomez and having those guys both step in and uh, give us their insights and get on camera with us and tell us about what they had going on. Uh, thank you guys so much. We've we, got... don't, we don't always need a top pro on as a guest. And, and nobody got time for that. Yeah, I mean, as much as we love to have them, um, 
it's times like these that are great times to promote some of the other people in disc golf, I think. So when when there's not the big event going on and when there's not, uh, you know, a, a major pro switching manufacturers that wants to make an announcement strictly on the Smashbox.tv podcast, correct? Correct. Okay. Just making sure that's out there. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So thanks, everyone, who, who A, listens and B, joins and C, gets out there and donates. <laughs> so I, I I appreciate that for for everybody out there. I'm I'm still so shocked and eh, that Joe Mez only has 26 patrons. Like, it, I, I know it's it's part it's his fault for not promoting it, and I'm sure he'd say the same thing. But I just think that when when a guy goes out and does that type of quality, that I would love to see that. You know, I would love to see that go up by the end of the month. Mm-hmm. So so, uh, thank you guys and. Um... Uh, we again. I did briefly speak. Uh, Paul Ulibarri says that his connection is not great. He's working on finalizing a trivia question, which will come a little bit later here in the show, uh, as to a free giveaway. I'm assuming it's going to be one of the hats. That's what he wanted to give away last uh, week. He talked about that, but then he also said, "You want to give away a Yuli Mini, Ooh. and this isn't just a Mini. I believe these are like a mini version of Yuli. Uh, that would be <laughs> awesome." I'd love one of those. <laughs> <laughs> like a real mini person or just like a statue? No, no a mini Yuli. Like a yeah, mini Yuli. Uh, yeah, I mean, kind of small as it is. But. Yeah, yeah I, I don't want to hear it as a guy who's pushing his <laughs> highest weight ever and working on it. Not, not to continue, but to go the other way. Um, I don't want to hear it when I was... Uh, Yuli talked a few weeks ago on the show about you know trying to shed a few pounds. And then I saw him in Arizona and he was like, yeah, yeah I'm like... I think he's at 175 trying to get down to that 165 or 165 trying to lose a few. I'm like, slow your roll. You're you're fine, kid. <laughs> you, you'll be just fine. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, so. He, yeah, Heasley says a Yuli bobblehead. You know what? Uh, you, uh, you like to not mute things uh, a mm-hmm. lot. And just hit the little mute button there There's, and it'll stay muted. So. You you have a bunch of bobbleheads, old school bobbleheads, still available for sale. If you mm-hmm. ever want to reach out, uh, Ken Climo, Barry Schultz, uh, Des Redding. Mm-hmm. I looked just recently, like within the last two weeks, I was like, I wonder how much it would cost not to do bobbleheads, but to do those um, those Funko dolls. I think that would be pretty cool because that's kind of the hot trend right now. Not so much bobbleheads, you know. Those are still pretty cool. If you, my wife was telling me. <clears throat> She goes to what's called stitch and pitch at the Milwaukee game where all the you know all the the local knitters get together and they get a unique bobblehead. She was telling me some of her bobbleheads are worth like hundreds of dollars because they're they're so limited. Sure. But I was thinking yeah, bobbleheads are so, you know, I'd love to see some custom Funko dolls, some of those uh pop figures or I think the other manufacturers Dorbs or something where that you see them all the time when you walk into like a, a gift store or a bookstore. You see like, oh, here, it's a Walking Dead ones. I think it'd be kind of cool to have some disc golf ones. But I looked everywhere I looked, you couldn't get them custom. You can get blank ones and make them up yourself. But ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, not so much. Well, uh, <laughs> oh, Yuli is out on the board officially. Says, come on, guys, 168 pounds, six foot on a good day. Are, are you standing on the second <laughs> rung of a ladder? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not so sure about that. A Yuli Beanie Baby. Um, I, I feel like those are, uh, those are, uh, we've kind of, that that's come and gone, the Beanie Baby. The Beanie Baby <laughs> craze. Yeah, yeah just we, a little bit. We lived through that. Uh, all right. So uh, we, again, will be talking or uh, offering up a Paul Uliberry Mini. I believe he's done some on the Mini Buzz, which are obviously a very high I- hot item uh, thanks to the uh, crew over at Discraft. I believe he's done some on Mini Buzzes, and uh, that's what I think he's talking about giving away. I can go out to, I think I can conveniently go out to ulistore.com that's U-L-I-S-T-O-R-E dot com and we can take a look at some of the things. He's got a ton of different hats out there. Of course, uh, a lot of uh, various uh, Prodigy stamp discs, as that is his primary sponsor. And then I think you can also pick up uh, a couple different shirts, as well as a, yes, a Crystal Buzz Mini and a Z Glow Buzz Mini. So I'm sure we'll get the coolest ones from him and then some Yuli stickers. And we appreciate Paul for joining us uh, most weeks and talking about the Yuli's picks. Let's talk about that real quick. I know that's normally a regular show piece, but I just want to confirm yay or nay. I'm crushing Yuli's picks still. 
you're breaking up, Terry. Ah, uh, <sighs> that's a yes. I appreciate that. Yeah, yes, yes. You're still doing fine. We we were running out of weekends to take care. <laughs> yes, of Yes, you are. Any off the top of your head, any idea what the points are? I have you by is that at least. I think 12? you have me by twelve or thirteen, and I have Yuli by five. I think. I'm not going to pull it up right now. No, don't bother. I mean, I wouldn't. This wanna, has been a bad week. I for wouldn't want to cry in those tears either. I, I've not only am I that wound. I, I I lost all but like one of my no, I, no. I'm sorry. Two out of my four fantasy football leagues I lost, knocking me out of any playoff contention. It's a little a little sad about that. I'm usually a perennial playoff player. Not this year. It's Todd Gurley up yours. Um, and uh, I had some work things. And I'm losing in, in Yuli's picks. And my daughter contracted lice somehow. <laughs> contracted? So th- well, that's I guess a, that's the term, yeah. Yeah. Okay. N- n- she didn't like to like, <laughs> spawn them, even though she is. Um, and so it's been a big pain in the Van Dersen household this past week. And I need to be up at work at 7 a.m. tomorrow oh, for a... Uh, for a big phone migration, uh, just it, this week. Oh, I'm, I'll, I'll be happy when this week is done. Rough life. I, I'm gonna, for those three days you have to work this week. Where uh, and how many did you work this week? I work every damn day. Ah, uh, I do. You 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 shot a deer. Ah, uh, yeah, but I work every day. <laughs> that's what's important. Yeah, that's here. what you call. That's what you call the Facebook stuff you do is work. <laughs> Somebody's got to do the real work around here. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, let's try to think if there were uh, any other topics that are mildly related to disc golf. Uh, one thing we hadn't talked about too much, really, uh, from the also talking about stores, the disc golf pro tour cards, and not oh, only yeah. coming in as uh, a full set uh, that is available for purchase. Not for, a full set. Well, we're going to call it the full what, basic set. What they're calling a full set. Um, the, so the disc golf pro tour has released cards. They got printed. Excuse me, and they're being sold, and uh, so you, you can get a, uh, a, a, a the set of cards, the basic set of cards, and then you can also buy trading packs, just as you were buying uh, any other cards when you were a kid, or maybe not a kid any <laughs> any other time. Uh, I guess plenty of adults still buy cards these days, uh, but you can get all the various cards, um, which is pretty cool. Yeah, all from the Pro Tour, uh, and I'd have to go out to the page to confirm, but I believe uh, everyone that uh, made it in the top fifty-ish. Here we are, the inaugural Pro Tour trading cards. Every pack includes all uh, sixty-one common cards, including forty-nine men and all twelve women that qualified for the Tour Championships. You are guaranteed the, com- the to get the set, the complete set of sixty-one cards. Venue cards and champion cards are not in this deck. There are five venue cards and four champion cards, which are only available in the trading card packs. Get a set and celebrate the inaugural Pro Tour season. I need to talk to Steve Dodge about this, but... Okay, there it is. Store. He should have a store link like right on page. A little more the, easy to a, find a, on the ra- page. Rather than, I agree. Rather than having to click the, the hamburger. Because no. people might not even realize that that's a link. Because it it, it, it kind of it doesn't. I mean, it moves so if you bit. go uh, another way to do it, uh, obviously you can go to dgpt.com or you can go to discgolfprotour.storeenvy.com. Uh, those are the two easiest places that you can uh, get out there and find uh, what we're talking about. It Again, says, these it says the Pro Tour trading card decks are sold out. I believe that, and I may have bought some. Um, How many did they? The, oh, those Print are top out. secret information, actually. Wow, that's fine. Um, so they're they're really. Oh wow, they are actually sold yeah, out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's saying sold out. I am glad I bought some. Um, yeah, so the deck that included, uh, as we said, the 61 cards seems to be sold out. I'm sure you'll be able to find them from different re- uh, retailers, di- retailers online as well, if you including need the disc golf guy. And then they will the, be available. Yep, and then you need to. Well, if you want, you can buy some Pro Tour trading card packs to pull in those extra correct nine those venue cards, cards those venue cards and those champion cards so the real question will be and i think we'll see this unfold how many of our own players bought the cards so that they have cards of themselves i bet you quite a few cuz it's a pretty cool honor i personally it is a very cool honor i would maybe not but i would hope that steve dodge would have sent each player that one one of their own card or give one out like, hey, Yuli, here's a card of you. Do whatever you want with it. If you want more, 
disc golf pro tour dot store entry dot com <laughs> or whatever. Ah, uh, correct. Yeah, I, I, but I think I think it would be kind of a nice gesture in general. But mm. it's I'm uh, not sure if he did that. I, I doubt he. I, well, not I doubt, but I don't think I didn't hear anything about it. But I think it'd be kind of cool because a lot of these guys they grew up probably collecting cards, thinking, oh, it'd be awesome if I were on a card. Mm -hmm. And of, we saw, of, of course, sort, a whether, few years ago, Avery Jenkins featured. On the tops, the yep. uh, the Ginter. Yep, as well as, well as uh, Ken Climo was also yep. featured in a in a card, and I think I somewhere Macbeth is too. Yep, yeah, yep. recently there was a, a very rare sighting of a Macbeth uh, card as well. So, um, yeah, pretty uh, pretty cool. And now these Pro Tour cards that have uh, come about, I think uh, we'll be interested to see what kind of collector value they have. If it'll be sheer collecting, or if it'll just be kind of a novelty item, or whatever the case might be. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see, and uh, kudos to Steve Dodge for um, for making that all happen. So, um, again, there are some packs that are available out on the website. However, it sounds like the complete decks are sold out, which they weren't earlier today, so that's actually news to me yeah. as well. Uh, I believe Steve Dodge does not have his own card. Not that one that's included in the deck, unless he made his own. <laughs> and uh, Country Disc Golf says that uh, he heard Ken Climo was the secret rare in the booster packs, and I'm not sure if he's joking or not, but I would be willing to bet a lot that is not the case. So if you heard that, don't believe so. I'm guessing you heard wrong, but I, I, I've been wrong once. Someone once said so. This could be number two. Could be. I don't think so though. I don't think that's the case. I want to get a. I want to get at least. I want to get at least two decks, two full decks. Wow. And and then hopefully a couple packs. I'd like to have a complete set is what i'd like to have not to mention just the, a set of basic uh so also uh in in the world of new releases i don't know did we briefly touch on last week uh the fact that uh jen allen disc had been released we did we okay so it. that's uh, uh i know that she was out there and making those available uh she actually her and i had a brief conversation about me possibly helping with some of the fulfillment she got such a influx of people from all over the world wanting some of her discs and knowing that she's got a full-time job and three kids and uh, is not one that's shipping out discs every day, kind of like I do, mm -hmm. uh, her and I talked about me possibly doing some of the fulfillment orders to get them out all around the country, the ones that she's not just hand-delivering. Yeah. Uh, but I know she's going to be ordering more. There was such a demand for them that uh, she'll be ordering more of those and making those available. So congrats to her. I think that's awesome, uh, recognizing her uh, setting the world distance record for women. And then uh, another thing, uh, a good friend of our show and uh, smashy out there, Mike Barnett had just released Throw Down the Mountain 5 registration, and I want to say it's sold out. I'm sorry if it's old news to you already, uh, but I know he just released it in like the last 24 hours. Mm. Wow. And uh, again, uh, huge success. So uh, you might be a little late to getting to it. If not, get on a waiting list or whatever. I think speaking of uh, huge tournaments and, and uh, registrations, I think there was some frustration at the Gentleman's Club event as well last weekend. Maybe, I don't know if Chris Cobb is still on the board. I saw I, it, just a sheer influx of people trying to register, trying to get in at the first national tour event of the year. And uh, someone had said that the site was down or it had gone down. People were trying to get registered. And I know that's frustrating for any site, for any event. Charlie's saying Worlds. the pro is still open. The pro... pro but maybe for for gentlemen's oh, or throw down the mountain one of the two or, or maybe for throw down the mountain he's talking about so um yeah certainly uh yeah that's there's a no there's no win there like you go to a site and let's just say it's a seven o'clock registration opens for open men mm -hmm. and you go there and then the site is just getting slammed by hundreds or thousands of people yeah I, I don't know if there's a way around it but then somebody doesn't get in and then it becomes a website issue truly a website you know concern yeah um, so, uh, hopefully that all got worked out. I don't know if Chris is still out there, but I know I saw him posting amongst some of that frustration. I think he ultimately got in. So yeah, Charlie said he was talking about throw down the mountain. So there is still some pro spots. Okay, available. So get out there and get registered. Uh, in terms of Florida, it is definitely a mountain, <laughs> uh, mountain in Florida terms. But yeah. By my standards. Hill. I mean, I think I jumped but, over things bigger than that with my dirt bike as a kid, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, it's an awesome event. And so uh, I know Discraft, along with uh, with Mike Barnett and Sun yep. King, are going to be working on it. Someone's asking, what what is uh, Jen Allen's disc? Uh, she, she set the record with a star wraith, and then I think she had a couple of different wraiths made up. 
Uh, I believe she had some champion glow race and then she had some star race done as well. So uh, the star race is what it was. Um, and I'm, I don't think she did it specifically with just the weight, which I want to say was a, I don't know. Now you're challenging. I'm challenging myself. 167 is maybe what I thought she set it with. I don't think it was a 175. Uh, now I'm, it's hazy for me. Um, but it's Star Wraith was uh, the commemorative disc and was the disc that she actually did it with. Oh, uh, Phoenix Ruger Redbird, who I met, said Cat is on the waiting list. Hmm. Yeah, well. that's tough. Uh, and uh, earlier we spoke of uh, Josh over at Boom. Uh, saw that he picked up uh, one Johnny McRae for the team. And so congratulations to uh, b- both of them, Johnny and Josh, uh, as uh, Johnny McRae. Looks like we're going to see him more on tour, as expected. Just yeah. can you think back to 10 or 12 or 15, and it wasn't in their cards uh, family-wise, but think if Johnny McRae had been on the national scene 15 years ago. How many more wins would he have taken away from Dozens of other people. Yeah, lots of other players. A I mean, lot. it's a lot. I mean, just as we've always said, it doesn't always work out for every player. It stinks. Like, you know, you have to you have to weigh the pros and cons. Johnny had a family and a daughter. A couple of them. A couple of daughters, yeah, that he wanted to get out of the house and get raised. And it's tough to do that if you're a touring pro. I mean, look at Kenny. He's had to, you know, for the past couple of years, he bounced the last couple of years of his big touring, he bounced back and forth because he wanted to raise his son, you know? And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to say. It's so hard to say, but these guys have to make sacrifices and it's just uh, what, what I think is so, that's why I think touring's a young man's game. Yeah, well, and what's so exceptional about it is that Johnny has joined the national touring scene just in the last few years. He's come in, he's done incredibly well. And it's just kind of scary to think how, much he would have really shaken things up and how many titles he himself would have taken down in, in I, I don't know if I can call it his prime, but in his earlier years. And everyone should be just a little bit thankful that he kind of that he kind of stuck to Florida for the most part because yeah. um, uh, he definitely would have taken a lot more titles uh, at other events. So pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> anything else that we've seen uh, exciting in non-disc golf worlds? Have you... Uh, hmm. uh, I, I hate to even touch on the uh, some of the other sporting worlds with how abysmal our local mm-hmm. Packers have been. Uh, so that's not such an uh, exciting thing to talk about. Bucks, Do the Milwaukee Buc- Bucks still suck? No, Bucks are doing pretty good. Oh, come on. Yeah. I don't know that I believe that. I'm not much of a basketball follower of any kind, but I've yet to hear of anything positive regarding our Milwaukee Bucks. Well, you probably haven't been listening. Well, you uh, we are in the Eastern Conference currently in. If you gotta count ninth, the ninth place, <laughs> if, okay, out of uh, ninth out of fifteen. Okay, so I was gonna so. say if you gotta do that much counting. Well, it's always so weird because they let so many teams in playoffs. Uh, in, in general, we're six and seven, so we're just under five hundred. But they've got a real solid team. Argue with me all day long that that's a good team. If they've if that they, they're not doing bad, that they're six and seven, they're well. If they've gone up against Cleveland, Atlanta, Charlotte, who are all ten and two, then yeah, they okay. could be a good team. They have a very good, solid core. All right, you know, they just lost to the Wizards. You know, only by only three points. Was Jordan playing? Mm, I don't think he does. So <laughs> they're just a good, solid team. They're not. They're not going to blow anybody out of the water. They're not going to. You know, they're they're not going to probably be in contention for a championship this or next year. But, you know, they're they're shooting for a playoff spot, and you know that's uh, okay. I, I'm got, not going to say anymore because I don't know. We enough. got the Greek freak, so okay. Well, we're doing all right. We got six and seven. All right. So, uh, Yuli says tough division. So we'll go with that. All right. Speaking of Paul Ulibari, I'm going to read his question very carefully to make sure that I have it correctly. This will be, as always, answered on our regular YouTube page. Thank you to all our uh, followers and listeners on the Smashbox page on Facebook, but YouTube is where the official answer will need to come in from. And let me uh, let me pull it up exactly how Paul worded it. This is for a Yuli Mini okay. from YuliStore.com. I think we've established that. YuliStore.com. And Paul asks, (laughs) 
Okay. How many amateur advanced wins, including non-sanctioned and sanctioned, did Paul have before going professional? How many amateur advanced wins, including professional or including sanctioned and unsanctioned? So this is a tricky one. Uh, you may have to know Paul a little bit better. But how many did he have before turning professional? The first person to guess correctly will, in fact, win. Uh, did somebody already guess it right away? Uh, some of the answers coming in. Seven, one, zero, sixty-two, forty-seven, nine, and uh, he guessed it twice. So he, he got it right the first time. Benjamin Kyle guessed correctly with one. One win. One advanced amateur win. For bonus, pat on the back. Can you name the event? Can you name the event in which Paul won before going professional in the advanced amateur division? Is it sanctioned or non-sanctioned? But can you name the win that he took before going professional? If you know Paul, that even if you don't know Paul, it should be a pretty easy answer. Mm. It was not any of my previous 10 cold turkeys here in Wisconsin. Which I actually might get a chance to play for the first time ever. It's because uh, because my daughter's... Uh, yes, Andrew Andrew Clayson, you are right. Nails it correctly with Am World. Yes, Paul, his only advanced amateur win uh, between sanctioned and non-sanctioned events, so any event was in fact Am Worlds, and from there he went. Uh, some other great answers, uh, sticking very regional, included uh, su- uh, <laughs> submissions were Sh- Shelly Sharp, High Desert Open, Tree Bash, uh, Lemon Drop, Sholo Showdown, all <laughs> uh, Illinois, or uh, sorry, Illinois, uh, Arizona events, and all great uh, answers, especially for those that either live there and or uh, know Arizona well enough. All great answers, however, it was, in fact, the Am Worlds. So congratulations. Uh, I believe it was Benjamin Kyle. It is. Andrew Clayson, you get a pat on the back for uh, naming it correctly. But Benjamin Kyle. So reach out to us, uh, Smashbox TV slash winners. Smashbox.tv Sorry, yep. slash winners. Smashbox.tv slash winners. There's a quick little form there uh, with a few quick questions. Excuse me, and uh, go out there and uh, f- fill that out, and uh, yulistore.com will, in fact, send out a free Yuli Mini Buzz. That's right. So, do, sweet. Do you plan on playing this weekend? Um, It uh, will It will honestly be a game-time decision. because yeah, you're running the event this weekend, and you're. I, I would say more recently you tend not to play when you run an event. Correct. Because uh, the events you run now are fewer and far between, and they tend to be Relatively bigger events. They so have been. It's, it's and, tougher to, to do both. And I'm just not as hardcore of a player as I used to be when mm-hmm. I used to compete 15, 20 weekends a year or more uh, for me to go out and then not really get much of a warm up, but make sure everything's in place and then go out and, and uh, just get started and play. And that used to be kind of my mentality. I wanted to make sure everything for the event was good to go. And now, not being practiced at all, I haven't thrown a disc in weeks or months. Um, it's just not the same and it's a little bit more frustrating and therefore, uh, yeah, I may or may not. Now the turnout for our Saturdays divisions, which include all professionals and all advanced divisions, that turnout is a little bit slower right now. So if there's only 40 or 50 people on the course, as opposed to the 70 or 80 that we'll probably see on Sunday, Mm -hmm. if there's only 40 or 50, the flow is going to go really well. It's going to, we're going to get done in plenty of daylight. We're going to have, everything's going to be relatively low key flipping around that many scorecards in a, in, in a short period of time is going to be relatively easy. It leads me to be more inclined to possibly play, but I'll also have to check out the divisions and, you know, I don't, yeah, so um, I would say I'm at least fifty fifty right now in terms of uh, competing this weekend myself. And normally I go up north visit family uh, on Thanksgiving, and I'm up there all weekend. But because of the little lice infestation, hmm. we don't want to bring my daughter anywhere and maybe spread it. So we might actually just have a home Thanksgiving, which we've never never done before. We've always visited family. 
And I turned to Sarah today. I said, are we doing anything on Saturday? And she's like, well, no, because we, we didn't plan on being here. I was mm-hmm. like, okay. I may go play an event. And she looked at me like, really? I'm like, what? I'm like, really? And I was like, well, I'm, I might. I, I haven't I haven't thrown a disc since Northwoods in sep- early September. Early September. And before that, I didn't th- throw a disc probably f- another four months before that. So I'm all warmed up. Uh, yeah. I, I should, uh, you're in prime uh, form for sure. Really, really get out there. But I may actually get out there and play. Uh, play in probably advanced division and just have fun. I'm, I'm not looking to you know, probably finish well at all. But <laughs> as long as I don't take dead last. We could make sure that you do. That's finish true. Well. That's true. I could, I could work some of those numbers. <laughs> um so uh, I'm, I'm, I may do I may do that. I'm not. I haven't decided for sure yet. Well, checking the weather for this weekend, putting a time and date and weather stamp on this, uh, since we're talking about it so much, uh, it looks like rain's coming into Wisconsin in that area in the next day or two. Uh, however, uh, and that's just uh, for Wednesday, Thursday, and then what we're seeing during this weekend, uh, there is a forecast right now for 41 on Saturday, or I'm sorry, on on Friday. 46 on Saturday and 50 on Sunday. Holy cow. That's a regular heat wave. Um, that That is definitely above average on... For November. Uh, for late November. So it looks like uh, come uh, Saturday, 46, and Sunday has a uh, high of 50. So uh, the the few registrations that I am uh, haven't uh, seen, I think, may start rolling in. In fact, I'm looking at my email right now, and I see about a half dozen registrations that have come in since 9.30 tonight. So uh, and there's also a ten dollar late fee that kicks in tomorrow night. So I'd suggest you get registered. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to charge you more. Just want people to get registered. So please go out and do that. If you're, uh, it's probably too late if you're already listening. <laughs> anyway, uh, and I don't know. Do we have a lot else for uh, for tonight? Well, there was a giveaway. There um, was. Um, um, I almost said his name. Uh, said that he would like to give away a a disc here. What? Um, uh, on our show it's a it's a it's a phenom b stamp uh, a 172 icon and i'm trying to bring it i apparently i don't think i can bring it up here he says he doesn't need any plugs uh he just wants to help with some giveaways he always uh tries to promote us to his locals well thank you very much and uh he's he, he's got our he's got our banner out on the course mm-hmm. cool so you know, it's on his private uh, course. Yep, on his on his private course. That's pretty awesome, I would have to say. So, yep, and he, he's showing a, a a picture of it. Uh, I see the Paragon banner. Lots of he's good lots of there. banners along the shed, and he's he's swinging around the shed. So we can hopefully we'll catch. Yep, and there's yep there's our our Smashbox along right next to Bearded Brothers and Legacy. So, uh, uh thank you out there. We just need to find a way to give away this disc. Oh, uh, he, I asked him. I we said, should have a giveaway for the best possible giveaway <laughs> for someone that, uh, yeah, wants to do. Okay, maybe not. Do you know what course that is? Uh North Carolina. Oh, I, I didn't want you to say it out loud. Oh yeah, I do. No, I don't know the. Na- I won't. I won't release the name of the course. How about that? But I believe it's in one of the Carolinas, East Carolina. I, I was gonna say maybe our, our our oh that's you were you were propping up a possible question yeah I didn't I wasn't paying attention I know that's to you okay at that time. I was gonna say if some the first person <laughs> to name the course could could get the could get the, the if, disc um that that would be one way to do it I don't know do you think it's a good way no okay then we'll we're go with something else because I because I partially ruined that already without so even that's not it. gonna be it so that's not gonna be it how about um. This is fun after show stuff. Yes, this is. Where we figure out how to give away stuff. Uh, I was going to say Should do, do do we care about a straight you uh a straight Google uh, winner? No, I don't care. All right, who was the person to win this what are we in? Number 11 of the cold turkey. Who is the person to win the third cold turkey? tournament pdga cold turkey tournament who is the the third person to win that tournament i think i know who it was i know i know i know one and two i'm pretty sure that i know who the third person in fact was Mm -hmm. was it me uh that's a good question hmm (laughs) 
what year was it? Uh, or, well, I, I, that, is, that I'm not going to tell this them. It's the, the third ever. So, so you, the they got to do some of their own math. This is the 11th year. I got to get back to the comments. Uh, I don't think David Heasley was born uh, is one of the answers that's come in. Uh, <laughs> David Felberg did not win. However, the David Felberg boss was released with a custom stamp for that tournament. And... Uh, it was in, uh, in fact, the first ever custom stamped bossed released anywhere in the country. I had the very first one uh, for that tournament. Okay. And um, that's who it was. Uh, so speaking of David Felberg, random player guest Mike Jones. Oh, which, seriously, it was me. Oh yeah. You... Oh, West, West Cappy. <laughs> West Cappy nails it. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> nice try, Ray. We wouldn't have let you win anyway. But, uh, but yes, West Cappy. Uh, you, you really, you picked yourself. You picked Nobody yourself. Nobody would have thought that. So that's why I thought it was clever. <laughs> why do you think I picked the third randomly? Seriously. I thought but I had to sell it like I'm picking a random number of the cold turkeys. But the third, the third. Wow. <laughs> All right, Wes Kepi. Smashbox.tv slash winners. Uh, go out there, fill that out, and we will get your information out to the wonderful gentleman who is... Uh, who who donated the 172 icon? So uh, uh, from East Carolina. From East Carolina. Ah, <laughs> uh, funny stuff. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Held at Brown Deer Park. That one in, was at Brown Deer. Uh, yeah, that one was at Brown Deer. The first two years were at UW Parkside. Third year went to Brown Deer. Fourth year might have went to like one of Dretzka's configurations, and then I think from the fifth year on, it has it's been down at the Gray Fox course. So. Okay. Uh, so it moved around for a number of years, which all would have been great trivia questions, but oh well. So uh, there you go. So thank you very much. Yes, Wes, you are our winner. Ah, yeah, that was a good day. And I destroyed the field. Uh, yeah, I had five stroke, uh, five stroke margin of victory there. Pretty good. That's uh, that's not too bad. And that was a solid. Uh, let me let's click on the round ratings. Shooting ten twenty nine and ten thirty golf. Oh, back in. The I mean, day. it was a slow day for me, but. <laughs> uh, aye, aye, yeah, aye. no, that was a that was a solid day. That's a very tough course. Someone asked if that was your last win. <laughs> no, Terry won an event this year. Yeah, I won a couple weeks ago, practically. So, against like five people, but um. But one, yeah. of, them, but one of them was Chris Heron. So. Yes, so then it, it counts. Anyway, solid giveaway. So thanks for the uh, thanks for the giveaway. Brown Deer last year, no Brown. The last time I ran that was again 2003. That was the only year I ran at it, that particular event at Brown Deer. Uh, any other Brown Deer events have not been run by me uh, out there. They've been run by other people. Excuse me. Uh, someone asked if we can tell him what happened to Simon Lazat that he misses him. Uh, Simon is still recovering. But uh, I'd like we'd like to get him on the show. In the he next... was doing some training. Yeah. Last week actually. Yep. He posted an Instagram about uh getting in shape getting ready doing re uh rehab and everything else there was a really quick instagram i think he had some rubber bands or something of that nature and and uh he's getting ready for the for the season no those are called his arms oh those are not those, rubber those bands. are not rubber bands good call um <clears throat> so yeah i think we're gonna see some more simon lazat in uh here in in this uh upcoming season for sure all right. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. You ever put on any glow tourneys, Tyler? S. I have. I've run a number of them. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go out on a uh, right now. I've had a couple different uh, angles on this this year again, and I, this happened. I don't know. Maybe it was 2008 time frame or somewhere around then. It's five, six, seven years ago. Uh, the 31st falls on a Saturday this year, mm -hmm. December 31st, New Year's Eve. Obviously, if you're already a PDGA member, you know, it gets all the way good through that weekend. I've thought about either, A, running some form of event. I, I typically run chaining in the new year as the last Saturday in Jan in uh, December. I've done that for the last three or four years. I'm considering doing that again. It would be in the Milwaukee area, so on and so forth. I've also thought about if there's anyone that would like to collaborate for me to go somewhere nicer and warmer and to help somehow somehow co-collaborate on hosting a tournament somewhere else in the country and having some New Year's Eve disc golf tournament where I'd come, maybe I'd do some filming, or maybe I would play, uh, or there'd be some kind of finals where we could do filming. I, I don't know. I'm, I w I've been meaning to put it out there. We're, I'm going to see the Globetrotters. 
That sounds fun too. But I would like to go to somewhere warm. <laughs> so if there is someone yeah. that has uh, is maybe kicking around, maybe there could be. I don't know. I'm thinking about. Uh, either Smashbox or Disc Golf Guy, you know, giveaways that could be included or some kind of branding there t- to either co-sponsor or co-collaborate on the tournament. I-, I would be more than willing to help out in a TD capacity. Uh, depending on the course and location, I would maybe be interested in playing, but then we could do other uh, fun promotional stuff. I don't know. It's an idea. It's something that I thought of, and if I don't go that route, then uh, there's a good chance I'll be running something small in the Milwaukee area, but those were some ideas. I had talked to an event in Florida recently who said something about having me possibly be there, and then immediately got me thinking, yeah, you know, the 31st and the 1st, doing that in some warm climate uh, somewhere uh, sounds like it could be a lot of fun, so... Those are some ideas out there. Benjamin Kyle on the board says he's uh, he thanks us and says he's uh, contacted Paul. Uh, great work, love the podcast. Listen to it at work and while driving. You guys are awesome and far better than Disc Golf Answer Man. Wow, I, I don't know if I'd have gone that far, but thank you. <laughs> Maybe he didn't, uh, but thank you, Benjamin. We appreciate it uh, so much, and uh, we appreciate all of our people chiming in and. Uh, taking it all in For sure. dan harbeck says he will have you'll see us on saturday he'll have the donuts and hot coffee and hot chocolate at the players meeting thank you to dan uh dan's doors okay that's not his company but uh if anyone does need anything <laughs> along those lines uh dan harbeck will be the guy to talk to uh here in uh, the wisconsin and illinois area so all right i think we can call it it's 11 30 it's gonna keep right. it short overall between regular show and after show is relatively short, and that's all right. It's all right. Uh, next week we'll have a, a great guest again somewhere down the queue. Uh, we were thinking ahead a little bit. We've got Greg Barsby somewhere in the queue, and we also have uh, a Paige Pierce, I believe, somewhere in the queue. So you're going to see those, uh, at least those two guests, obviously, plus a bunch more uh, coming up mm-hmm. in the next few weeks, and uh, we'll keep you guys posted. So unless you guys got anything else out there? I uh, no. Nope, I don't have anything. Uh, Johnny V doesn't. No, nothing. Nothing's new up on my radar. Catching up on Mr. Robot, which is really good, and uh, I want to go see a movie. How many seasons is Shameless? Happened? I think it's like five or six. Uh, I'll say my household and by and me with one eye, I've only been able to catch some of it. Uh, is on like season four, and I didn't know how many it is. It's it's phenomenal. It's yeah. really, have you watched it? Not yet. I, I've seen like bits and pieces of them. Yeah, uh, when we, I think when we were at Mike's house. And but I haven't had a chance to sit down. I it's I will at some point. It's yeah, just a matter it's, of getting, it's definitely really good. Getting into it, uh, definitely really good. That's the one thing that was kind of on my radar. Again, I only get to see it with about one eye as I'm doing other things in a, in the background. But uh, Jeff asks, how long does it take to get from Gray Fox to Milwaukee? Depending on where you're in Milwaukee, I would budget for about an hour uh, hour time. Yeah, it's about on where you it's, are. for me. It's about forty five minutes, yeah, you're and on, I'm on the south side of Milwaukee. Exactly. So, so. if you're up by Dretzka. You know, add 15, 20 minutes to that, so on and so forth. I'd, I'd budget for at least an hour. And things should move really quickly this weekend. Uh, we're going to have less than, I'm guessing, less than 72 uh, split up. And next year I may go to a one-day format and have all 90 people on one day where things will move slower. But we'll worry about that next year. So uh, we'll check in next week. We'll have results from the cold turkey where Johnny V may be crowned your advanced master, grandmaster champ. Two more years, I'll be an advanced master okay. champion. So advanced. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny V going for the title in uh, in advance, possibly this weekend. I'll have the updates. We may uh, see a return of Dynamite. Uh, we may have a DG Mike uh, as your champion. He's got to battle it out with some great competitors this weekend. Uh, so we'll look forward to that action. So for Johnny V and myself uh, here at the after show for Yulistore.com and all of our amazing supporters and sponsors, also our anonymous giveaway from East Carolina. We thank you guys for tuning in for the after show. We'll catch you next week with more sweet action when you step inside the Smashbox.